Please share your thoughts in comments and like this video. Meet Oren Dura who is an enchanter and a member of an S-rank party. He had dark hair and blue eyes, he was making preparations for their party's next expedition. Suddenly he was called by his friend, Oliver who was the leader of the party. He wondered why he was calling him formally like that out of the blue. Oliver suddenly announced that Oren was kicked out of the party effective from that day. Oren was shocked and asked Oliver what kind of joke was that. Oliver Cadiff is known throughout the country as a sword saint for his swordsmanship skills. But Oliver denied that it was not a joke. Oren was enraged as he didn't know why Oliver was doing that to his childhood friend and brother in arms. Oliver also agreed to that and mentioned that he let Oren join his party because they were from the same village. But he felt that it's going to be too hard for him from here on out. Simply, he accused Oren as he was not skilled enough for them and that's why he wanted him to leave their party. Eight years ago, a ten-year-old, Oren and Oliver formed a party. It soon gained the people's attention and was thus called the Heroes Party. In the southern Great Labyrinth where no one has ever reached the very bottom. They became the first to reach the 94th level. A super skilled party that climbed up to S rank in a mere few years after it was formed. Oren agreed that his skills might leave some to be desired but he knew that it was the same for all the party members. But Oliver preferred to have the enchanter in their party to be stronger. Enchanter is the person who gives buff and support magic to the other party members. He believed that they failed to realize how important the existence of an enchanter is until then. He told Oren about the dragon raid from last month, and that's when he understood how valuable an enchanter can be. And they also knew that Oren's support magic is a league below other S-class enchanters. Of course, Oren knew that he would fall behind as his original job was swordsman. That's why creating original magic was difficult for him from the beginning. That's when the defender of the party, Derek Mosley shouted at him to stop his babbling. He mentioned that the reason Oren became an enchanter was because his sword skills also fall short compared to Oliver. Now, they were saying to Oren that he wasn't a good enchanter, and they believed that Oren was not in any position to complain about it. Oren argued that he did that because their party lacked an enchanter at that time. They chose Oren who had the highest aptitude to convert to be an enchanter. Since then, Oren had compensated for his weakness with his own personal magics, and thanks to that they had been able to survive so deep in the labyrinth. He asked his friend Oliver to vouch for him, but he just mentioned that the hero's party had to continue moving forward. It was evident that he had also given up on him. They had already found a replacement enchanter and that's why Oliver needed Oren to leave now. Oren was disappointed with his friend's response. He couldn't believe that's how they would treat a comrade who's been with them through thick and thin. But he was now an unneeded existence to all of them. Since they had already found his successor, he didn't have a place there anymore. So Oren decided to leave and he thanked them for everything. A woman exclaimed that it was a relief that Oren finally left. It was one of his ex-party members, sorcerer, Annalie Wiles. Even though, Oren had the ability to do both magic and sword skill, both of them are just a class. She was pissed off every time someone like Oren questioned everything they did. She teased Oren as the master of none. She asked him to do something that suited him this time like a loser he was. Oren turned back to see his fake friends for one last time and Annalie was taken back by that. He came to know that's how Annalie had thought of him all this time. Even though he always gave his all to this party, he was discarded in the end. He wondered why he had even tried to get involved in a party with people like them. That's how he was fired from the hero's party. The next day, Oren only managed to woke up in the afternoon. He arrived at the inn and immediately sucked in bed yesterday. He hadn't thought of what he was going to do from then on. He could go on living without much trouble but he had to find his new way of living now. He could think of three things. 1. He could continue as an adventurer and scour labyrinths for materials and sell them. 2. He could work somewhere. He might earn less but it's more stable. 3. Open up a shop. He could earn a lot but there's also a huge risk of failure. Among those options, continuing is the only answer for him as he had experience in it. It's not like he wanted to become rich. He came to this city because he wanted to be an explorer. He came there with Oliver but it's not like he wanted to be an adventurer just to chase him. He became one on his own violations. He also didn't have to worry about the party's condition now as before. He decided to return to being a swordsman. Since he had decided that, he needed to get his feelings back. So he decided to go to the labyrinth which had opened up nearby recently to practice there. He went to the labyrinth and the guild staff of dungeon entrance management inquired why he was going there alone. 
Oren wondered if there was a problem with that. She explained that there's no problem but she felt that it was dangerous to go alone. So she asked him to come back after forming a party. Oren denied that it was a no issue for him and he asked her to see the guild card, he gave her properly. She was surprised to see Oren had reached level 94. She suddenly apologized for her rude behavior before. She changed her stance towards Oren completely to 180 degrees. Oren was able to finally enter the dungeon but he couldn't help but wonder about that sudden change in attitude of the staff. It was a calculating move even though he was fired from the hero's party. Oren entered the labyrinth's first floor. The monster he encountered there was a horned rabbit. He felt that a monster like that was perfect to train a dulled blade. He killed that monster in a single swing, and it was quite an easy win for him. It seemed like Oren hadn't dulled as much as he had thought. Since he had already come all the way there, he decided to go a bit deeper to train some more. On the third floor, he met goblins. The monster's numbers seemed to be gradually increasing but they all had only low intelligence. He was bored and he decided to try to cast his support magics as well. Support magic is a type of magic that's commonly applied as buffs to one's own body or to increase a weapon's effectiveness. Not only for party members, enchanters are also able to buff themselves. He casted strength up on himself. He successfully casted it and the real test begins from there. He dashed towards the goblins and killed them one by one. He also counted the time it had taken for him to do that. Support magics are extremely convenient. However, they still had a weakness and that is time. He was only able to maintain his buffs for exactly three minutes. He noticed that there's still more monsters deeper inside. He decided to make them as his training partners. Support's magic effects don't last forever. Also, depending on each individual's magic resistance, the effective time also changes. In Oren's case, it is 180 seconds. The enchanter had to count the timing and apply buffs while fighting or supporting their party members. He reached the last three seconds of the spell. He casted another buff on himself and killed the goblins. Enchanters who use support magic are always racing against time. He casted for about 20 times and he finally got the feeling back of using the sword. Nevertheless, he liked this new style of switching around between swordsman and enchanter. Oren believed that he could improve his skills further with those. He certainly knew that he was master of none, but he wanted to evolve even further from there. To never let anyone call him a master of none ever again, Oren is determined to become the strongest jack of all trades someday. He reached up to seventh floor. He decided to call it for that day. He saved his journey in the crystals with his guild card. It allows one to teleport to the saved floors of the specific labyrinth. It would be placed in every entrance of the new floors so that the adventurers could avoid the trouble of passing through the same floor many times. That's when he heard a quarrel between another party. It seemed that one of the members believed what he did was right. They used a little girl as bait and ran away. There were more monsters than they had thought so the leader of that group used that new recruit as bait rather than sacrificing his old teammates. Oren felt complex emotions upon hearing that. It reminded him of his ex-party members. He knew that it's not his place to butt in and blame that little girl luck for coming across such a party members. But he also knew what it would feel to be abandoned by a party. Moreover, there's also a chance that she had already died down there. But he still decided to save her. He shouted at them that he had heard enough. They were startled by Oren's shouting all of sudden. Oren berated them as a bunch of kids who were whining instead of going back and saving the little girl. People like them are what Oren hated most. One of them got mad at Oren and tried to attack him. He argued that he was also left alone there so there's no chance to save her. But Oren easily held his wrist and pushed him down. He asked that man to lie where he belonged and complain all day. He inquired others about the location where they left the girl. They were taken back by Oren's anger. They showed him the way to go there. Oren started to run there leaving the others surprised. He wouldn't even have asked for the location if hadn't planned to save her. A red-eyed girl with red hair stood there alone afraid. She knew that it was a hopeless situation. She knew that she wouldn't be able to fight all those orcs alone. But if she didn't do anything, she was sure that she would die. So she mustered up all her magic and casted a magic barrier. She pleaded with those orcs to stay away as she didn't want to die yet. She wished for someone to save her before the magic barrier collapsed. She cried at her helplessness and thought about her big sister. At that time, Oren was running at his full speed to save that little girl. 
He cursed the adventurers who use people as bait and believe that people like them have no right to form parties. The little girl managed to use her magic barrier for a long time but the monsters were relentless. Her barrier started to crack. That's when a huge spell arrow shock was executed in front of her. Orin managed to reach that place successfully on time. He asked her to focus on the barrier magic and assured her that he would take care of the orcs. The little girl also agreed to do that and Orin moved ahead to slaughter the orcs. The little girl wondered whether Orin was a magician or a swordsman. Orin casted numerous buffs on him like strength up and technical up. He also enchanted his sword just in case. He casted sharpness up on it and the sword shined brightly. The little girl was surprised to see him even using support magic as well. Orin counted and found that there were 13 orcs in total in front of him. It was no wonder that the party ran away. He jumped into the orcs group and slaughtered them. It was a child's play for him who had managed to reach up to 94th floor. He killed all of the orcs and the little was shocked to witness his strength. He exclaimed that he was incredibly strong. After finishing them, Orin breathed a sense of relief. He inquired whether the little girl was alright. He wasn't able to see any external injuries but he still casted, heal, on her just to be safe. After some time, the little girl seemed to come to her senses. She breathed a sigh of relief that she managed to stay alive. She fell down to her knees and cried as she was quite scared. Orin was surprised and didn't know what to do in that situation. The only solution he came up with was to pat the little girl's head. Since he knew that being abandoned by one's allies is really a scary thing. The little girl finally managed to stop crying. Orin apologized for suddenly patting her but she didn't mind that. She thanked him as she was grateful for him saving her. She really thought she was gonna die back then. That's why she was so happy when Orin came to save her. Suddenly, they heard a sound. Orin, who had tons of experience, knew that there were more monsters coming on their way, so he decided to leave that place first. He helped the little girl and escorted her back to the entrance. Orin decided to leave and she thanked him once again. She apologized for not introducing herself and revealed her name, Sophia Clodale. Orin was surprised to hear that name and he also found the insignia matching that on her dress. He also introduced himself as Orin Dura. Sophia felt that Orin was a wonderful name. She wanted to treat Orin to dinner as a thanks for his earlier help. But it's not homemade though. Orin denied that it wasn't needed as he did not save her to be repaid. He was already satisfied with her thanks. But he wasn't able to overcome Sophia's cute pleading eyes. And so he agreed to it in the end. Sophia was glad to hear that. Orin inquired whether she had already decided on a place. If not, he suggested that he knew some places around there. But Sophia already had planned about that so she guided him there. She guided him to a small restaurant but she assured him of the taste of the food there. Orin noticed that the shop belonged to the rabbit group. He already knew from her cape's insignia that, she really is an adventurer from the famed, Silver Rabbits of the Night Sky Clan. A clan is an organization of adventures. There, they sell and process materials the adventurers bring back from the labyrinths. Sometimes, they also open restaurants and general stores like this shop as a side business. The materials they sell are then used to upgrade their equipment. Then it was used to gather even better materials. Among them, the Silver Rabbits of the Night Sky is the major clan with many members. So Sophia really shouldn't have needed to group up with a random party. So he wondered the reason behind that. They went inside the small restaurant and Sophia greeted her sister. But Orin was also shocked to see Sophia's sister as he already met her once. Sophia's sister also had the same red hair and red eyes like Sophia. Sophia's sister was there to grab dinner as she had a meeting that day around that place. Setting that aside, she teased Sophia if Orin was her boyfriend. She teased her that it was still too early for her to do that. But she stopped in the middle as she managed to recognize Orin. She greeted Orin with his full name with anger. Orin also greeted her using her name, Selma Clodale. She was the party leader who stood at the summit of the Silver Rabbits of the Night Sky. A famous adventurer comparable to the hero party's leader, Oliver. The reason for that was because of her pretty face and being the strongest enchanter in the continent. She's also the reason why he wanted to try and become an enchanter. And that's also why he got kicked out of the hero's party. Not only, Selma had popularized the job of enchanter but she also created the idea of roles in parties. She brought up the idea of spitting parties into three different roles. 
The offensive, attacker, the tank, defender, and the backline, supporter. This became the immediate staple of parties. The hero's party is no exception to that, and he was the one who eventually ended up in the supporter role. In the last month's quest, Oliver saw Selma's magic effects and decided that Oren wasn't good enough and fired him. He never thought that Sophia could be related to her. But he wondered why she was staring daggers at him for a while now. Selma accused Oren of seducing her cute 14-year-old sister and exclaimed that Oren had some guts to do that. Now he knew the reason behind her anger. Oren tried to clear the misunderstanding as he didn't have any improper thoughts. But Selma thought he was claiming that her sister, Sophia, was not cute enough for him. Oren felt annoyed to deal with a sister lover. Sophia interrupted between them and asked Selma to not be rude to her life savior. From that, Selma found out that Sophia went into the labyrinth alone again. Sophia was caught by her own mouth. Selma inquired why she had done that when she asked her to be patient. She was planning to take her on a big expedition the day after tomorrow. Now Oren knew why Sophia was snuck inside the labyrinth all on her own. Selma did not wish to say anything since she appeared to be safe. But from then on, Sophia was not allowed to do things like that anymore. After that, Selma thanked Oren for his help in saving her sister and apologized for her early rudeness. Oren didn't mind that but his stomach growled at that point. So they decided to share a table together. Also this was the first time, they had a proper conversation in a while. Even when they went on that subjugation quest, they didn't talk about anything other than the quest. They first met each other, last month, on a subjugation quest. They were positioned together since they were both enchanters. But Selma took the lead and he was just there as her support. Seeing their conversation, Sophia wondered if Selma already knew him. Since her famous sister knows him, Sophia comes to the conclusion that Oren must also be a famous person. Selma revealed that he was one of the members of the hero's party. Sophia was surprised to hear that as that was the most famous party in the continent. Oren asked Sophia to not to be tense as he was no longer a hero. Selma was also shocked by his statement and came to know that he left the party yesterday. She wondered what made Oliver leave such a man. In her opinion, they had to beg Oren to stay with them. They inquired about the reason for him to leave his party. Oren mentioned that they had their own circumstances and it's something they had agreed on. He refused to reveal that it was due to the last quest and Selma. She inquired him whether he was free and confirmed it. Hearing that question, Oren wondered whether Selma was going to invite him to join her party. But Oren himself was not sure about whether he was interested in it, after what happened last time. Selma started to talk and he interrupted her. He claimed that he didn't want to join any party for a while. Selma explained that he was mistaking something and mentioned that she had the perfect job for him. She wanted Oren to help her in a teaching expedition. Oren was taken back by Selma's unexpected request. It was a collaborative exploration. It's a new plan that they have for the Silver Rabbit of the Night Sky. A few rookie explorers accompanied by an A-rank explorer will climb to the 51st floor of the Southern Dungeon for three days. Oren felt that it was a reckless plan. It usually takes 6 to 12 months to clear those floors, no matter how skilled that rookie is. Selma also agreed to that but mentioned that it was not impossible if he followed the shortest path. Salama explained that it was because of Rabbit's Guild sponsor's expectations, the clan was made to work like there's no tomorrow. But Oren had his doubts about that. If the sponsors were persistent for such a reckless plan, then he knew that there had to be some other reasons for that. After thinking for a time, he found the answer he needed. If the rookies could bypass the boss floor and gain levels, it would strengthen the clan overall. That was their main reason to conduct dungeon exploration for rookies. Selma was shocked to see Oren managing to infer their plans from just her words. He's far smarter than Selma had initially thought. A boss would appear every tenth floor and one had to defeat it in order to proceed to the next level. It's a common occurrence to see rookies dying in those boss battles. But if the veterans like Oren were to distract the boss while the rookies bypass it and register with the teleportation crystals stationed at the entrance. They could advance further without facing the boss. In other words, it would greatly reduce the risk of training new members. Selma revealed that it was indeed their plan. She wanted Oren's help since he was free and wanted him to accompany them. Oren felt suspicious about their actions as it was such an important operation. He wondered why she told him such details to an outsider like him. Selma explained that it was because she values him highly. She realized it during their previous collaborative subjugation. Oren was taken back by that. 
On one side he was happy to have the strongest enchanter evaluating him highly. On the other side, he wondered on what basis she had those opinions. After all, he was told that his powers were inferior to that of Selma by the hero's party. He wondered if Selma was asking him to be an enchanter again but he was sure that he would regret that. Oren replied that he was happy that she had high opinion but he denied her offer as he had his own plans. That's when Sophia called out to him. She revealed that she would also participate in that rookie's exploration. So she would be extremely happy if he could join them. She asked Oren to reconsider it. She asked him with her puppy eyes as if it really was impossible. Just like before, Oren was moved by her. He decided to cooperate much to the sister's relief. But he put forth a new condition. Even though Selma valued him highly as an enchanter, he mentioned that he had already converted into a swordsman. He wanted to join that exploration as a swordsman instead of being a supporter. Selma was surprised to hear that but it was one thing that Oren refused to yield. Selma agreed to that condition as she believed that Oren would act as a professional enchanter if worst comes to worst. She asked him to come to the headquarters of the rabbit clan as she wanted to explain more about that exploration in regards to the details and rewards. Oren agreed to that and left the restaurant after the dinner. The sisters also left that place. Sophia felt bad about letting Oren pay the money for the food they ate. Selma asked her to not worry as Oren had no intent to let the child Sophia pay for him in the first place. Sophia felt that Oren was a kind and strong person as he had saved her and paid for the food as well. Selma felt the competition and mentioned that she's not lacking behind him in any way. If it's just orcs, Selma was confident that she could kill a hundred of them without injuries and she also loves her more than anyone out there. Sophia also agreed and exclaimed that her sister is the most amazing enchanter and her number one ally. Seeing Sophia's smile, Selma was glad that she was safe. However, she was planning on how to pay back the party that abandoned Sophia. She already knew the name of the party but Sophia's voice interrupted her thoughts. Selma was so deep in her thoughts that she failed to notice that they had already reached their clan headquarters. She decided to focus on the guys that would partake in the collaborative exploration. She asked Sophia to return to her room first as she had to report what happened that day. Sophia also returned to her room but she didn't forget to ask her sister to not stay out too late. She exclaimed that she would wait for her return. Selma was touched by that and felt that her sister is the cutest in the world. She went to the captain's room of the rabbit's guild. There was an average man with spectacles inside the room and he inquired about what Selma came to report. Selma mentioned that she had two things to report. His name is Vince Bryarth, the top brass of the silver rabbit in the sky. In the first year of his role as the leader, he managed to rebuild the clan from a crisis. A person that has the utmost trust and respect from its clan members. Selma mentioned that it was about the hero's party and Vince went into a deep thought. Selma called him to make him come to his senses. She revealed that Enchanter Oren was parted from the hero's party and he was surprised to hear that. She confirmed that news as she heard it from that man itself. Vince was sure that was quite a demerit for the hero's party. Without Oren, he was sure that they wouldn't be able to fight to their fullest. Selma also agreed to that as she knew that they were able to climb the floors only because of Oren's support magic. While Oren's support magic is below average, the activation speed of his support magic is at least four times faster than Selma. Furthermore, those are his original magic spells that Selma had never seen before. She had witnessed it last month but she felt that his ability to foresee, assess battle situations and accurately time his support magic was impeccable. She knew that Oren had all the necessary skills needed for an enchanter. So without Oren, it was inevitable that the hero's party would start to deteriorate. So Selma was sure that it was possible for their rabbit guild to return to the top with those circumstances. Vince also heard about Oren last month but he still finds it hard to believe that Oliver fired Oren. Selma felt that it was feasible as it's extremely difficult to evaluate an enchanter after all. Even though Selma was getting the attention of the world, she felt that evaluation was a bit overestimated. The truly skilled ones are like Oren who don't stand out. Vince's ears hurt to hear Selma overpraising another one. Selma gave another shock report about Oren joining the collaborative exploration. But he felt reassured to leave rookies under Oren, but he was worried about what he wanted in return. Selma mentioned that they would discuss those details tomorrow at the headquarters. However, she revealed that Oren might had grasped the situation in their clan while she made the request. It was the issues with the sponsors who were aristocrats. They were obsessed with this plan and the guild had to do it no matter what. Since they would be in trouble if they cut their funds. 
Vince also agreed that Oren was sharp as he realized that. Since Oren had already left the party, Vince felt that there was no need to be cautious of him. However, he still decided to attend tomorrow's meeting just to be safe. But he inquired Selma about the reason she was interested in him. He wondered if she needed Oren to join her first squad of rabbit clans that she leads. But he had his doubts if Oren would be able to fill the missing piece that the first squad had. They lacked an absolute ace and wondered if there was really anyone who could fill that position. Selma was also not sure about that but she thought that Oren had the aptitude for that. But Vince had his doubts as Oren was also an enchanter like her. What they needed was a frontline attacker and Vince didn't want to allow it if there's a problem with the composition of the party because of him. Selma also agreed to that. Since Oren wanted to be a swordsman instead of an enchanter, she thought that relying on him wasn't worth it. They concluded the meeting as they were now assured that exploration would be completed swiftly as they had Oren's help who had plenty of experience. Selma also finished her report and left that place. Selma was also troubled by the fact that they were not moving forward at all. Even when the hero's party had decided to self-destruct, they weren't able to improve since last year. She felt tired as there were problems everywhere. Then she remembered Sophia's cute face. She decided to let herself get healed by her for now. The strongest enchanter on the continent has a sister complex and she has a lot of love for her little sister. The next day, Oren went to the alchemist shop and met a familiar old man. He wanted to buy healing potions as he would be heading to a great dungeon from tomorrow onwards. The Gramps welcomed Oren to his general store with a warm smile. The Gramps had always treated Oren who had no relatives like his own son. So he's somewhat of a granddad to him. Oren asked the Gramps to take his time as he knew that the influx of customers had just calmed down. He was glad that the Grampa's business was thriving. But the Gramps attributed his success to Oren of the Heroes Party who advertised his shop, so he was grateful to Oren for that. Oren decided to tell everything to the Gramps. He revealed how he was not a member of the Heroes Party anymore. So he won't be able to advertise the Gramps' goods like before. Since he won't have any influence as he was no longer a part of the Heroes Party. He apologized to the Gramps and felt sad as he wasn't even able to repay someone who had been taking care of him. But the Gramps patted Oren as there was nothing to worry about. He was more than happy to talk with someone like Oren who had a nice character. The Gramps wanted to do business using his own support. He was thankful to Oren as he had already done more than enough for him. Oren was surprised to hear that, and mentioned that he was the one who was thankful for his kindness towards him. The Gramps watched Oren and believed that he had endured quite a lot this time. But Oren didn't want to cry about something like that. Seeing his adamant figure, the Gramps consoled him. He mentioned that it was alright to cry a little when things get painful for him. After hearing his kind words, Oren began to cry and vented his frustration there. He was grateful to the Gramps once again for his kindness. Oren went to the appointed meeting place and greeted Selma there. Selma asked him to follow after her. As they were going on, Selma mentioned that Oren's face seemed brighter than yesterday. She believed that Oren had made his resolve over the hero's party. Oren also confirmed that and they went for a meeting inside the Silver Rabbit headquarters. This had happened in the days that had well passed. Two adults were watching the fight between Oliver and Oren. They praised Oliver's skills as he was someone worthy of the title, hero. But on the other hand, they deemed Oren as an ordinary child even though he was called a prodigy back in the days. As the fight progressed between them, Oliver managed to knock Oren's sword and defeated him. The two adults also decided to let Oliver carry on their will. They believed that to be an ideal choice. They decided to use the once called prodigy as a shield for the hero. Oren exclaimed that he had lost. But he still smiled and exclaimed that he couldn't beat Oliver anymore. But Oliver was mad as it seemed that Oren hadn't fought him seriously. He didn't want the fight to end easily as he was more amazing than him in the past but his skills didn't improve for the last few years. Oren believed that Oliver was overestimating him and mentioned that he had indeed fought at his best. He mentioned that Oliver had grown stronger and there's no way he could defeat a genius like him. But Oliver refused to believe that crap. He still didn't believe that he had overtaken Oren and was determined to defeat him when he was serious one day. But Oren still mentioned that he had indeed fought seriously in a carefree manner. 
But Oliver refused to believe that. He was determined to make Oren fight him seriously. So he left that place with that determination. After Oliver left, Oren who was on the ground refused to have a situation where he wanted to fight Oliver seriously. Because he didn't want to kill Oliver and he didn't want him to die because of him. But his thoughts were interrupted by a girl who mentioned it was a shame. The girl's name is Cheyenne and Oren was surprised to see her there. He got up and was embarrassed to let Cheyenne witness his lame figure. But she believed that Oren was cool in that fight. She mentioned that she knew his true abilities. But Oren denied that and mentioned that his weakness was his true ability. He believed that it was all due to his weak resolve. His power was weak in the eyes of the adults who had talent in everything but lacked any special trait. He blamed himself as Oliver had to bear the burden of expectations of his village because of him. He wanted to do something for Oliver. Seeing Oren like that, Cheyenne promised to not leave him alone like that. She wanted to become strong enough to stand beside him. Oren was surprised to hear that. Cheyenne wanted to become strong enough so that they could defeat something in the future. She was the same as Oren and wanted to be always by his side. Even if Oren went beyond her reach, Cheyenne was determined to catch up. That's why she asked him to not shoulder this burden alone. Oren was moved to hear that. He then proposed to walk Cheyenne to the carriage as it was already late. He moved ahead and Cheyenne asked him to wait for her. She then noticed Oren was crying. She believed that he cried because he was moved by her words earlier, but Oren refused that it was not. He wanted Cheyenne to tease him only when she reached his level. Cheyenne countered that since he had been fighting his best earlier, she believed that she had already surpassed him if he was only at that strength. Oren berated Cheyenne for being cheeky as always. Cheyenne mentioned that even though what they said seemed like a joke, she vowed to catch up to him so that they would be able to fight alongside in the future. Until then, she wanted Oren to be her guiding light. Oren also agreed to serve like that so that Cheyenne won't lose her way. He walked with her to the carriage and Cheyenne boarded it. He said his farewell to her. The current Oren apologized to Cheyenne as he couldn't be that guiding light in the end. Because after this something happened to everyone but it wasn't revealed what it was. Since Oren managed to wake up from his sleep. He felt that it was a strange dream. He couldn't even remember Cheyenne's face after waking up. He couldn't remember anything at all. He went through some precious times but he had yet to remember them. The fateful day arrived where Oren had to serve as a guide in the exploration for the Silver Rabbit Guild's rookies. He went to the southern Great Dungeon's entrance where the rookies of the guild were gathered. Selma greeted him there along with her sister, Sophia. Oren also greeted them back and went near them. He noticed that Sophia seemed totally different from before. Sophia wore the guild's rookie uniform and Oren complimented that it looked good on her. Sophia was taken back to hear a compliment and thanked Oren back while blushing. The sister's lover, Selma, was shocked to see her cute sister blushing. She berated Oren for being skilled at flirting and inquired whether he had any lover. Oren denied that and believed that he had gotten used to it as he had lived with female members of the hero's party. Selma came to her senses after that explanation as it was indeed true that the hero's party members lived in the same mansion. Sophia asked Oren about where he was living now and Oren answered that he was living by himself in an inn. He also revealed his plans about finding himself a new house. The sister lover was shocked to see her sister ask that question and wondered if Sophia was planning to live together with Oren. Sophia was embarrassed to hear that and called Selma as stupid. But Selma felt down as she heard the word stupid. Oren couldn't help but laugh at this drama. After some time, they managed to calm down. Selma inquired why Oren was standing at a distance from the group. Oren replied that he didn't want the rookies to feel tense around him as he was an outsider. Since it would make them more nervous when they were already looking tense in their first time exploring the dungeon. But Selma planned to use Oren to relieve that tension among the rookies. She asked Sophia to group up with her party members and shocked Oren to follow her. Oren wondered what Selma would make him do. He was sure that there was something definitely going on with that collaborative exploration. With his doubts, he followed Selma. 
The previous night when he had reached the Silver Rabbit of the Night Sky's headquarters. As per their agreement, he went over to their headquarters. He was introduced to their clan captain, Vince, and was filled in about the plans of the collaborative exploration from Selma. To summarize the points, the exploration will take three days. Their destination would be the Great Southern Dungeon, moving from the first floor all the way to the 51st floor. In consideration of the rookies, they would prevent camping outside and return daily when they reached the target number of floors, there would be 10 rookie parties participating in this operation. Five guide leaders, including Selma and Oren would be in charge of the parties. The fight with the monsters would be conducted on a rotational basis from the two parties. Furthermore, if an unexpected event were to occur, the guild leader would be taking care of it. Selma explained it all and felt glad since Oren was sharp on the wits. But Oren felt that it looked like a forced march. Selma inquired Oren if he had any questions and Oren mentioned that he indeed had one. He wondered why there were only five guide leaders for ten rookie parties. If they wanted to push through with such a reckless plan, Oren felt that it would be better to bring along several A-rank parties to support the rookie party to reduce the risks. Selma agreed with Oren's opinion that it was such a reckless plan. But she believed that a few risks would lead to the growth of the rookies and believed that it would be a great opportunity for them. But Oren knew that the explanation was just for the surface. That's a plan that focused more on the ends rather than the means. So he knew that there would be more reasons than that. But Oren was sure that they didn't plan on sharing those reasons with him. In the end, he decided to take on that job. Selma thanked him for his help and revealed that the reward would be two gold coins in advance, and ten gold coins when Oren finished the mission. Oren was shocked to hear such a huge amount. He was happy to get a high amount but he wondered why they were paying him that much. With that amount, he would be able to live normally for at least a year. Selma explained that it was because she values him highly. Oren was surprised to hear that and mentioned that he would do his utmost best at his job tomorrow. The scene shifted to the present where Selma and Oren went to meet the other three party guides. But in the last meeting, the captain of theirs didn't even say a word. Oren still had some doubts over the content of his job. As Oren greeted the other three guides, he was surprised. Selma introduced Oren to them and vouched for his abilities. The others teased Oren as they could rely on him more as Selma seemed to have a high opinion about him. Oren became flustered and asked them to not raise the hurdle for him. He then composed himself and introduced himself to others, he introduced himself as a frontline attacker rather than enchanter. The other three also introduced themselves. The two boys in the group were Arnold and Anselm who were defenders. The girl's name is Kathy who was a healer. Oren found that they had only one attacker and one enchanter. He wondered what they had planned to do if he had joined their team as an enchanter. But he had to agree that it was a balanced composition. He once again felt that there's something odd about this operation. After their introductions, Selma proposed to greet the rookies as well. They gathered all the rookies and Slima gave the speech before them. She revealed their plans about reaching the 51st floor of that dungeon. She could see that everyone was feeling tense as they were scared to advance towards the middle floors so suddenly. Normally, rookies would only enter a dungeon after another year of training. She asked the rookies to not worry as they had invited a strong helper to deal with unexpected events. She introduced Oren to the rookies as someone who had reached the 94th floor which their guild didn't even accomplish yet. The rookies soon became restless and discussed among them how amazing that was. Since only the hero's party had managed to attain that place, Selma revealed that Oren was part of that. She was sure that he was more familiar than anyone else when it comes to the dungeon. The tense atmosphere soon disappeared and everyone was excited. But Oren became tense as he felt that the rookies were getting way too excited. Since the hero's party was very popular, the students felt that it was easy to accomplish 51st floor with Oren. With a renewed determination. Selma started their exploration. The rookies all cheered with great enthusiasm. On the other hand, Oren was restless. He never thought that Selma would use him to relieve the tension. But she was quite proud of her achievements. She asked everyone to stand by with their parties and asked the guide leaders to do one final checkup. 
Oren asked why Selma had made the rookies too excited as he was concerned about it. But Selma felt that it was fine and asked the guide to lead them thoroughly. She then asked Oren to be responsible for the 9th and 10th squadron. She revealed that the 10th squad had the most promising ones of all. If they refined their teamwork, Selma was sure that they would be able to proceed smoothly without much issues. So she counted on Oren for his guidance. But Oren felt uncomfortable as the guild left the promising rookies to an outsider like him. He introduced himself to the rookies and they were all excited to have Oren as their guide. Oren was shocked to find the reaction from them which he would get because he was being in the hero's party. Soon he noticed that Sophia was also in the 10th squad and she smiled brightly at him. He then asked everyone for their names and positions. He also confirmed that no one was late and absent from both of those squads. The 10th squad which had Sophia had only three members in it. He found it rare as the fewer members there were in the party, the more dangerous it was. It was especially higher, if they were rookies. The boy in the 10th squad explained that it was because no one was able to keep up with them. Oren was disappointed to see that boy's action. They may be promising but he was too confident of his abilities which made Oren worry about his future. In the end, he decided to ask everyone to start their introductions. The boy from the 10th squad introduced himself as Logan Hayward who was also the leader of that squad. His position is an enchanter and he proclaimed himself as a man who would surpass Selma, the world's best enhancer once day. Oren became dejected to see a confident one. Next another girl raised her hand. She introduced herself as Caroline Inglod and her position is defender. Oren inquired why she was wearing only light armor if she was a defender. He wondered if she was gonna change it when they were gonna head in. But Caroline proclaimed herself as a defender who doesn't wear any kind of gear or armor. Oren became dejected once again and found that she was an evasion-type defender. Caroline explained that she didn't like to touch those magical beasts. But she also wants to kill as many of them as possible. So she became the position that is closest to them. Evasion-type defenders usually use their speed to hold the monsters in one place instead of confronting them. Caroline seemed to want to fight like that. But Oren knew that the evasion defender would find it difficult to accumulate battle experience. So he wondered why no one objected to her role in deciding that position. Logan explained that Caroline stuck to that position even though many objected to her choice. Caroline counters that Logan would always ignore the instructions of the instructors and he didn't get to slang her. Logan proclaimed that he was exempted from listening as he was excellent. In the end, Oren found that they were all problem childs. In the end, Sophia introduced herself and her position as a magician and a rear attacker. She greeted Oren with a warm smile. Oren didn't know why but that normal introduction put him at ease. Sophia went to stop the quarreling Logan and Caroline. Oren watched that and believed that his mission was a lot harder than he had thought. They all entered the dungeon and the collaborative exploration finally began. Even though the rookies were all fired up earlier, Oren was amazed to see them become quiet after entering the dungeon. Caroline called out to Oren and asked why someone from the hero's party was joining them for exploration. She wondered if they didn't find the Silver Rabbit as their rival clan. Oren explained that he was no longer a part of the hero's party and Selma had already mentioned it in her speech. She knew that the hero's party was always cautious of the Silver Rabbit and paid attention to their activities. So she wondered why Oren had quit. She felt that it was such a waste for Oren to quit that party as it was a target of admiration. Oren didn't like her to probe into his past. Even though it seemed that Caroline didn't look like she had any ulterior motives, Oren was not good with people like that. He refused to explain and Caroline teased him as a cheapskate. Then she confirmed that Oren was acquainted with Sophia. She revealed that Sophia had been telling them that a fantastic person was going to join them for this operation. Sophia became embarrassed to hear that. Caroline was sure that the fantastic person was Oren and Sophia also confirmed that. She revealed that she was once saved by Oren before. She clearly saw how strong he was. Furthermore he was from the hero's party and her sister, Selma also said that she would be relieved if Oren was there. She vouched for Oren's abilities. 
Caroline listened to it and inquired why she wasn't loosening up a little more since they had someone from the hero's party. Oren remarked about how he had already left the hero's party. But Oren clearly noticed Caroline's actions. She had initiated a conversation to loosen Sophia's tensions. He was surprised to find that Caroline was a thoughtful girl. They moved further into the dungeon but the monsters spotted them. It was a pair of wolves. It considered them as easy prey and leaped forward to attack them. Oren noticed them and a magic circle activated from the ground. Soon sharp stone pillars emerged and killed those wolves. Both of the wolves died by having their bodies with numerous holes. Oren confirmed that the traps had been working properly. It's a time-based magic trap. To time the trap, it takes a certain degree of skill but the moment one sets it up, it's hard for anyone to notice it. If it goes smoothly, they would be able to deal with the monsters on their rear without much effort. Since their time was extremely limited, they couldn't afford to waste any time with pointless combat there. They managed to reach the 20th floor of the dungeon. Caroline inquired Oren about how far till they had to reach the floor's boss. Oren answered that it would take 10 minutes if they continued at their current pace. Caroline felt bored as the 10th floor finished early. But Oren was glad as it seemed that they would be able to finish earlier than they had planned without any problems. He had been observing the three of them and how they fought. He had his doubts about that three-man squad initially but they were fine. Firstly Logan, he thought Logan was just an arrogant rookie but his skills as an enchanter were definitely high. If Logan could keep up with the long-term combat, Oren was sure that he would be able to fit into an A-rank party without any problems. He was a prodigy without a doubt. Though, Oren felt that it was unfortunate that his instructions as an enchanter were mediocre. But he was sure that Logan could become stronger if he accumulated combat experiences. Secondly, Caroline, she's aiming to be a speed-based defender. Though she might possess great speed, she had two flaws. The first flaw is that she had a tendency to rush in recklessly. A defender fighting closely was good but Oren got worried watching her do it. Her second flaw was that she wielded two daggers. Its compatibility with her may be good but it didn't pair up with her party's skill sets. That was all he could think about them. Lastly Sophia, she seemed inferior compared to the other two but her skills had already surpassed that of a rookie standard. Though her indecisiveness was a problem, it could be compensated for if she interacted more with her team members. She didn't seem to have any obvious flaws as a rookie so Oren was interested in her growth in the future. The ninth squad he was in charge of also had room for improvement. Soon they heard a huge growl of a monster. It seemed the other three guides had managed to defeat the 20th floor boss monster. They stopped at the 20th floor for that day but Oren didn't expect it to go that smoothly. He believed that he had underestimated the Silver Rabbit Guild. Selma complimented everyone for their work. She wanted to go to the 21st floor but that was scheduled for the next day. So she asked everyone to register their card on that floor as they could teleport there from the entrance. The rookies lined up and registered their cards. Everyone was happy with their achievements. In the end, everyone teleported to the entrance of the dungeon instead of camping there. Selma thanked Oren for his hard work. Oren also complimented her. Selma then inquired about the rookies. Oren explained that the 9th squad had room for improvements and the 10th squad was exceptional as she had said. But their coordination was non-existent. Oren especially worried about Caroline as it would affect her if she was remained like that. Selma explained that Caroline might be like that but she had improved a lot compared to the past. Oren wondered how Caroline was in the past. They ended their conversation there and planned to meet there the next day. The next day, Oren woke up and read the newspaper. He exclaimed that it had turned out as he had feared. What was written on one side of the newspaper is the exclusive coverage of the replacement of the hero's party enchanter. In other words, the expulsion of Oren Dura was exposed to the whole world. His friend who was also the leader of the hero's party explained that the biggest reason for the replacement was Oren's lack of skills. The sword saint mentioned that they didn't know that Oren's abilities were below average. In other words, despite letting such disappointment remain in the party, 
they still manage to reach the unprecedented 94th floor of the dungeon. Philly Carpenter who joined yesterday is an explorer who is active in the Western Great Dungeon. She was considered as the best enchanter in the continent who is on par with Selma Claude. There were great expectations for the hero's party now that a great replacement had been included. Oren hoped that they wouldn't publish that until the collaborative subjugation had ended. He was worried that if the rookies knew about this, their glittering eyes would change for the worse. Especially Logan from the 10th squad. Oren wondered if such a prideful individual would be able to follow his instructions after seeing that. Oren knew that not all the rookies would be able to read this newspaper. But it would be easy to imagine the change in their perspective of him if they had read that article. Oren felt that it was pointless to think about it further. So he decided to go to the meeting point. That's when a girl with blue hair and blue eyes called him. Her name is Runa Flockhart who is the healer of the hero's party. She greeted him with a sad face. But Oren knew that the last time they had met was only four days ago. While the treatment of Oren was getting worse in the hero's party, Runa was the only one who treated him with kindness. When Oren was expelled, she was away for personal matters. Oren wondered what would have happened if Runa was there in that room. But he soon berated himself for still having some lingering regrets in the hero's party. Oren inquired where Runa wanted anything from him. Runa pleaded with Oren to return to the hero's party as they need his skills. Oren already had a feeling that Runa was going to say that. Since he knew that she values him quite highly after all. Oren explained that it was not the opinion of the whole party as he already read the newspaper. Runa explained that it was her own plea. She vowed to do her best to persuade everyone if Oren were to return. Oren found that Runa was clearly serious about bringing him back. But he also knew that it's already too late for that. The moment that article was published, Oren had lost his chance to return to his party. Furthermore, he explained that he had no plans of returning. Runa apologized as she didn't know what the article said as she hadn't read it yet. But she wanted him to honor the promise they made that they would clear the great dungeon together. Oren countered that the promise was made by three of them including Oliver. Now that Oliver had chased him out, that promise didn't hold any meaning anymore. Runa still tried to persuade him but Oren decided to end their conversation as he knew that it would only be a hassle. He left that place after apologizing to her. Runa stood there and watched Oren leaving the place quietly with sadness. Oren also wanted to continue getting along with them and fulfill that promise. But he couldn't return nor did he have a place to return now, as it's all ended ever since that day. Oren once again realized that it was too late to have any hopes up. Oren fear came true as the news of his expulsion from the hero's party soon spread around the rookies. They clearly gossiped about it in front of him. The reason included in the newspaper was that the Oren lacked any abilities. Seeing Oren there, the rookies greeted him. But Oren clearly noticed the difference from yesterday. Even though they had managed to fire them up, he knew that it was all a waste due to the article. He decided to wait at a distance to reduce the confusion among them. Selma came running there and apologized as she didn't manage to clarify that confusion as an exploration leader. Oren believed that Selma had nothing to apologize for. He also mentioned that Selma's panicking would make the exploration fall apart. Selma apologized for revealing that Oren was from a hero's party yesterday as it was a matter that should be treated cautiously. Oren explained that it was his fault for not disclosing his expulsion reason to them. He asked Selma to do her usual as he would do his part to support the exploration. Hearing that, Selma calmed down. They both decided to start the second day of the exploration. Oren made his way to the meeting place of the 9th and 10th squad. Sophia and Caroline greeted him as usual, but Logan and 9th squad members greeted him with disappointment. Oren greeted them back, he inquired whether they had all read the article about him. They all remained silent and it was evident that everyone knew about it. Oren revealed that all of them were true and he was kicked out of the hero's party due to his lack of abilities. So he was not the kind of hero everyone thinks of him. The ninth squad began to chatter after hearing that. Oren apologized for not telling them before. Sophia shouted that Oren was really strong which shocked all the rookies. 
she exclaimed that Orin managed to defeat a dozen of orcs instantly. That's why she believed Orin didn't lack in abilities. Orin was thankful for Sophia's trust in him. He explained to the other students that he has the ability to bring everyone to the 51st floor of the dungeon. Even though he was not a part of the hero's party, he swore as Orin Dura that he would protect them. The rookies began to fire up just like the day before and Orin asked them to do their best on that day. They shouted with a renewed determination. They managed to reach the 23rd floor and the rookies performed well. Orin was glad that they started to trust him again. He was supposed to be giving out orders as a guidance leader that day, so it would have been bad if that grim atmosphere were to linger. Especially, the ninth squad, they tend to respond slower if they were to follow the theories without the trust they have, it wouldn't have gone that smoothly. Then he sensed the presence of demon beasts ahead and inquired the tenth squad if they were ready. They also prepared for the combat as Orin instructed. One orc and numerous goblins emerged before them. Orin asked Caroline to get the attention of the goblins. He then asked Logan to support Caroline with support magic. He asked Sophia to deal with the orcs at the rear. Orin then noticed Logan as he was pretty interested in his support magic. Logan began to construct magic circles of amplify strength, amplify magic and amplify abilities before him and casted it on Carolyn. Orin was amazed to see that Logan was capable of casting three support magics despite being a rookie. There was nothing to point out regarding his magic abilities. Caroline also rushed ahead as usual and killed the goblins. Orin found that there were no problems with the two of them. But the problem was with Sophia. She was attacked by orcs the other day so she was frozen from the trauma she received from then. Orin asked her to calm herself and assured her that she would be fine. He also mentioned that she has teammates now, so she would not be abandoned just like before. Seeing the orc nearing them, Orin casted the agility debuff magic on it. He assured Sophia that he would support her even if she made mistakes. Once again, he mentioned that she was not alone. That's why he asked her to go all out. Sophia regained her spirit and decided to show what she could do. Orin believed that Sophia would be fine as she was not the lost child from the dungeon like before. Sophia casted a powerful magic spell and concentrated without considering the surroundings. She launched the spell Fire Javelin at the orc with her full strength. Everyone was surprised after seeing the impact of Sophia's spell. Logan and Caroline also stopped on their tracks. Though Orin asked Sophia to go all out, he certainly didn't expect her to use advanced magic. As everyone was in shock, Caroline went ahead and praised Sophia for her skills. She hugged Sophia and she was glad that it went well. Orin complimented that it was an excellent attack. Sophia thanked him for his compliment. Though the battles after that were as tough, they had managed to reach 36th floor which was their goal and returned to the surface safely. Outside the dungeon, Selma praised everyone and asked them to prepare for the last day of exploration. After she dismissed the meeting, the other two defenders Ansem and Bernard asked Orin to wait. They wanted to grab some dinner after that and invited Orin to join them. Orin was glad that they didn't think badly of him because of that article and he agreed to join them. Since they didn't interact during exploration, he thought that would be an excellent opportunity. At the same time, Logan inquired whether Sophia was acquainted with Orin. Sophia explained that Orin saved her when she was in the dungeon three days before. Sophia revealed that she went with a stray party and Caroline berated her for doing such a dangerous thing. Logan asked Sophia to tell him more about Orin, about how he was back them as detailed as she could. Sophia was surprised and confused at the same time. Logan explained that he wanted to know about what kind of magic Orin cast and his fighting style. Sophia mentioned that Orin used a spell that made a tremendous pressure which was called Shockwave. She also remembered Orin using support magic to enhance his sword. To the confused Logan, Sophia explained that Orin used that sword to defeat all the orcs quickly. Logan found that Orin could use both sword and magic. Sophia revealed that Orin converted into a swordsman after leaving the hero's party though she was not sure about his circumstances. Logan was shocked to hear that as it didn't even make sense to him. He saw how Orin acted his part as an enchanter perfectly that day. 
He had a misunderstanding this morning after reading the article. He was disappointed when he read that he was expelled from the party which had betrayed his expectations. He followed his instructions because of his role even though their first battle was handled with theory, though it was boring to him. But what changed his view about Orin was, that fight with Orc. Logan realized that the Orc's movement was suddenly dampened and Orin had already activated agility debuff on it. A support magic that lowers the target abilities. Debuff is a high-level magic that is difficult to cast. One needs to accurately grasp the target's magical resistance and precisely alter the magic formula for it to work. Even Selma hardly used such difficult magic and yet Orin was able to use it casually. Logan was amazed by Orin's skills. The first time they fought according to theory, which was conducted to evaluate their skills. When that's done, efficient instructions are given to them based on their quirks and skills. Logan knew that Orin instructions had made them advance without any issues. Even though it was only slightly different from how Logan fought, he felt as if his skills grew exponentially. Compared to his instructions, the differences were apparent. Orin was precisely the enchanter he expected to be. Logan realized that Orin was an enchanter who even surpassed those expectations. So Logan was confused why Orin had changed into a frontline attacker. Caroline asked Sophia whether Orin was strong even as a frontline attacker. Sophia confirmed it as he was able to defeat dozens of orcs in an instant. Sophia and Caroline praised Orin's abilities and wanted to become like him one day. But Logan was even more confused to hear that Orin was an excellent frontline attacker. Even though he was called a prodigy by a bunch of people, but he felt that Orin was a genuine prodigy. But he won't give up. Logan was determined to succeed as an explorer no matter what. He wanted to steal what he could from Orin and wanted to get even stronger. Caroline noticed Logan's weird expression and inquired whether was tired. Logan explained that he was just fired up for tomorrow's exploration. So the 10th squad returned to their room with a new determination. Orin and other guide leaders went to the Silver Rabbit affiliated restaurant to have dinner. They decided to drink that night and inquired Orin to tell about himself more. Bernard only asked him to mention the things he wanted. He was considerate to Orin since he knew about his expulsion. But Bernard wasn't afraid of hangovers as he had a special constitution that could help him with that. But Orin countered that even a lack of sleep is a bad idea. Another guide leader, Anselm, asked Bernard to control himself as they needed to instruct and protect rookies. He wanted to be vigilant even though it was just the middle floors. But Bernard still wanted to drink till midnight as he gave up to Anselm and Orin. Orin was surprised to find them both as regulars of such an expensive restaurant and he believed that explorers of Silver Rabbit have their privileges. Anselm denied that as their earnings paled compared to the hero's party. They both wanted to eat all the delicious food without any regrets as exploring is a life-threatening job. They wondered whether Orin didn't live such a luxurious life. Orin clarified that he didn't experience such luxuries. Since he was in charge of the party's administration process, he didn't have the time to play around. Bernard then decided to ask him some private questions. He inquired whether the hero's party members were having some disagreement among themselves. Normally, Orin wouldn't disclose such information but he was quite irritated with the article. He wondered if it's okay except for things that should be avoided. Orin explained that they were not in complete disagreement, but he agreed that they pretty much enjoyed their free time privately. Their hobbies and interests differ and they also hardly ate together as a party. Bernard and Anselm were shocked to hear such private information. They wondered whether it was okay for Orin to reveal such things. He agreed that they had some disagreement. Orin felt that there was no problem as their leader Oliver was feigning ignorance this time, so he assured them it would be fine. Afterwards, Bernard inquired why Orin changed form enchanter to frontline attackers. He also noticed Orin used magic during combat as well. So he wondered what was Orin's best skill. Orin explained that he was a swordsman now even though he used support magic during the collaborative explorations. He converted into a swordsman following his exit from the hero's party. Bernard then asked him why he changed into a swordsman. Orin explained that he was initially a swordsman in the hero's party. 
It was the position he had the most admiration when he was kid. So he decided to return to being a swordsman as he thought it was an excellent opportunity. Anselm also supported Oren to follow his passion. He wondered whether Oren's parents were swordsmen and Oren denied that and explained that his grandfather was a swordsman. In the past, a monster attacked their village once. His ex-explorer grandpa defeated it with just one sword. He had also wanted to be a swordsman after witnessing such a spectacle. But now Anselm was confused why Oren changed into Enchanter in the first place if he had that much admiration for swordsmen. Oren explained that it was a trigger that took place when the hero's party went to the lower floors of the dungeon. They noticed their pace was getting slower. The floor space was more expansive and the monsters got more robust as they went lower. But in the past, they had no idea as they didn't have such information with them. Originally they should have improved their abilities. A special circumstance gave them no choice but to increase their pace. That's when they found out about the importance of an enchanter due to Selma's evaluation. It falls on Oren who was jack of all trades back then. Oren also had a few ideas for him to be the ideal swordsman, and magic was included in that. That's why he decided to take that job. Anselm thought that it was the reason that they were able to reach the 94th floor. But Oren felt that it was a wrong move. Bernard and Anselm were surprised to hear that. Oren felt that even if he was a complete enchanter, he shouldn't rush the pace and strive to improve his abilities at that time. Bernard and Anselm came to know about Oren's true feelings. Oren who vented his frustration explained that he was just being harsh on his past self. That's all he was willing to say to them as any further information would be much more private. But little did anyone expect that the hero's party would never be able to reach the 94th floor ever again. Seeing the tense atmosphere, Bernard inquired what was Oren's ideal swordsman like. Oren thought about it, and explained that he wanted to be an amazing jack of all trades. Seeing them confused, Oren simplified it. He wanted to become a swordsman who is capable of clearing the deepest floor of the dungeon alone. He wanted to be the first precedent for that. They were shocked to hear that as no one was able to achieve that feat till that day. Still, they encouraged Oren that he could do it. At the same time, in the Silver Rabbit Clan headquarters the living area, shared bath. Caroline was taking a bath and she lamented about having the exploration ending tomorrow. She wanted to go much deeper. Sophia was near her and Caroline exclaimed that being split from Oren was also rather sad. Sophia also became disappointed as she won't be able to see Oren after tomorrow. Sophia felt that it would be nice if Oren joined the Silver Rabbit clan after that. Caroline inquired why Sophia didn't ask him that. She felt that Oren would join their clan if Sophia asked him. Caroline was sure that Oren would do that if Sophia wished. But Sophia countered that Oren was different from her sister, Selma. But she was sure that she would feel lonely if she won't be able to see Oren again. So she planned to ask him whether they could see him even after the collaborative exploration was over. The next day, Oren reached the meeting point as usual. It was the last day of the exploration of the Mammoth Clan, Silver Rabbit of the Night Sky. He hoped to end things without any problems that day. When he was walking through, he heard the gossip that the newly formed Heroes Party was going to the lower floors. They had planned to stop at the 92nd floor to test out their teamwork. Oren was surprised to see them move fast. He assumed that they would be taking it easy for a while. Nevertheless, they planned to drag a new member straight towards the 92nd floor. He berated them for not testing their teamwork at much easier floors. They were acting impulsively but Oren felt that it was not his problem anymore. He would have never thought that his fear would come true in the worst possible way. Two days before at the Heroes Party residence, the new enchanter, Philly Carpenter, joined the Heroes Party. She thanked them for picking her. Heroes Party defender, Derek and magician, Annalie, were present there. The leader Oliver also attended the celebration to welcome the new enchanter to his party. He was called the Sword Master, the masterful and renowned explorer throughout the continent. Oliver was glad to have a real enchanter in their party. He felt that they wouldn't need to receive a shabby buff anymore and could experience a real buff. But Philly was surprised to see that they had prepared an expensive meal for them. 
Derek explained that it was not much trouble as their nagging safekeeper had finally gone. He was surprised to find that they had stored an amazing amount of money from the ledger Oren stored. Derek felt that his eyeballs would fall out from the large sum saved there. Annalie also agreed with such surprise. She criticized Oren for being a cheapskate and believed that money is meant to be spent. Oliver was surprised to hear that. He knew that he left the management of funds to Oren but he never thought that he stored that much money. He was also reminded that he never asked Oren about their savings all this time. Derek framed Oren that he must have saved the amount to use it for himself and believed that Oren would have used them without their knowledge. They were once again sure that expelling Oren was the right decision. Philly wondered whether they were not the funds for the party's activities. Derek denied that and mentioned that they used their own money for those matters. Philly clarified that and mentioned other expenditures like the mansion's rent. Derek thought about that. He proposed the idea to buy the mansion as they could sell it when they would leave the city. Annalie praised that idea and planned to spend the remaining money. Oliver asked them to stop as they were in the middle of celebration for Philly. He wanted to talk about those later. Oliver cheered with his expensive wine and welcomed Philly to their party. Suddenly, the door opened. Runa came running there and wanted to clarify something with everyone. She was surprised to see a guest there. Oliver asked her what she wanted to talk about. But Runa refused to talk about it there. Seeing her panicked expression, Oliver could say that she wanted to talk about what happened with Oren. He had already told Runa about his plans on expelling Oren from their party but she kept disagreeing with it. That's why they expelled Oren when she was not present. Oliver knew that he couldn't avoid her criticism as she seemed to hold some special affection towards Oren. Oliver wanted to hear her opinions there itself. Runa revealed that Oren went into the Great Dungeon with a Silver Rabbit clan and she asked Oliver how things had turned out like that. Oliver was shocked to hear that. He never thought that the enemy clan would accept a worthless enchanter like him. He wondered if Oren had already betrayed them as they were only three days since he was expelled. But he was sure that Oren didn't have guts nor skills to do that. Annalie and Derek berated Oren for acting like A.S. rank without knowing his place. But Runa ignored those comments and inquired Oliver to explain to her about that. Oliver wanted to explain the story before things get complicated as calmly as possible. But Annalie intervened and revealed that the Jack of All Trades left the party three days ago. Runa was shocked to hear that. She felt that Oren had finally given up on them. Derek became mad when Runa sounded like they were the ones who got abandoned. He clarified that it was the other way around. He revealed that they were the ones who chased him out. Runa turned to Oliver and inquired whether it was all true. Even though Oliver wanted to explain calmly, the other two had already broken the egg. So Oliver accepted it and showed Philly as their new enchanter replacement. Runa was pretty sure that she made it clear she was against Oren's expulsion, so she wondered why Oren was expelled when she was gone. Derek berated Runa for ignoring their new enchanter. But Runa even ignored Derek. He got mad at that and went ahead to fight. But Oliver intervened and asked him to stop his bickering. He explained to Runa that they would never be able to improve with Oren's weak abilities. But Runa didn't understand their motives. She knew that Oren was a pillar that supported their party. She knew that they had been able to come far because of Oren. So she was sure that they wouldn't be able to advance any further without Oren. The atmosphere soon became tense within the mansion. Oliver felt that Runa was overestimating Oren for some reason. But in reality, they were the ones who underestimated Oren. He wanted to handle that matter objectively. But Annalie once again intervened. She asked Runa to stop her illusions and accept the truth. She also berated Runa for being young and used that as a reason for her immaturity. Since it already happened, there would be no way but to accept it even if Runa didn't like it. In the end, just like Oren said, she wasn't able to change anything. Since they were already there, Runa wanted to talk about tomorrow's dungeon expedition. She didn't believe that they would be able to capture the 94th floor at once, as it was a reckless move. Philly apologized as she wasn't able to support them quickly. But Oliver didn't mind that and mentioned that it was fine since they were comrades now. 
but Runa was still against their plans to go to the 92nd floor. Derek became mad once again and accused Runa for disrupting their party's harmony. But Runa clarified that she didn't have any suicidal intentions. Oliver assured her that they wouldn't die even if they went to the 92nd floor. Since they had reached the 94th floor with Oren, he believed that Philly, a superior enchanter, would increase their levels. Runa countered that they need to try out their synergy on easier floors even if Philly was a competent enchanter. Oliver became quite mad at Runa's persistence. He wondered how long Runa would continue to see Oren's non-existent illusions. He wanted to make her face reality and proclaimed that it had already been decided. Since he was the leader, he announced that there was no room for refusal. Runa left the room after hearing that, without bothering to attend the newcomer's party. She once again realized that it was all over. As she left, Annalie and Derek berated her for supporting Oren. Oliver and Philly discussed how Runa was close with Oren, and she needed time to get along with her. Philly also understood that and showed that she wasn't upset with Runa's behavior. She then mumbled that it's not going to be easy anyway and felt annoyed. Oliver overheard her mumbling and inquired about it. Philly managed to hide her thoughts and mentioned that she wanted to get along with Runa soon. It seemed that the hero's party had recruited a troublesome enchanter in the place of Oren. The next day, they raided the 92nd floor as per their plan. Oliver charged ahead and faced the huge monster alone. But no matter how much he attacked it, he wasn't able to defeat it like always which made him irritated. He was also mad as the buff wore off so quickly. The physical abilities after a buff end would always feel like a large amount of weight attached to the whole body. If repeated, it would become a considerable burden both physically and mentally. In the case of Oren, they were able to work together without any problems in about an hour on the first day. But that was not the case with Philly as it's been a few hours since they entered the dungeon. Oliver asked Philly to buff him again as it had already ended. Philly apologized as she wasn't able to time it correctly. She then began to cast her support magic. Oliver wondered whether it would take a while to get used to it. He had to agree that Oren was better than Philly only in that aspect. Even so, after coming to the 92nd floor, he noticed that Philly's atmosphere seemed to have changed. But he dismissed thoughts as it was just his imagination. He decided to rely on her. Since Derek and Oliver were vanguards, they would have many blind spots. So he asked Philly to warn them if any magic beasts approached them there. Philly was shocked to have another job. Oliver thought that enchanters could see the whole battlefield and Philly could do it. But Philly deemed it as impossible as she already had her hands full with using support magic alone. She was quite tired as she had used her support magic many times that day. Oliver wondered whether it was a little hard of him to ask Philly to do something that Oren had been doing for them for a decade. Then, he noticed that the monster wasn't defeated after a long time. He reminded Annalie that they were on lower floors, so he asked her to get serious and not to use such low-power magic. But Annalie denied that and mentioned that she was just using the magic as she would as usual. Even so, the magic she casted was weaker than normal. Oliver was shocked to see the usual firepower of Annalie. Derek berated Oliver for taking his anger out on others as they were also not at their best that day. He believed that they were in a slump. Oliver could also feel his own attack power weakening. His sword was always reliable when he wanted it to but it wasn't today. His physical ability had improved dramatically with support magic but he struggled to go against the weak monsters. It was evident that Derek was also getting pushed back by the monsters of the 92nd floor, which they had defeated easily in the past. He cursed himself and wondered how they got that weak. Everyone in the party felt miserable at their own powerlessness. That's when Runa berated them for not knowing something so simple. Oliver inquired Runa if she knew why they were like that. He also noticed that only Runa was the same as usual. Runa was too exasperated to even say anything. Annalie shouted at Runa to tell them the reason, and berated her for her attitude when her comrades were having trouble. Runa also felt that she had no choice since they were still comrades. She then proceeded to explain the reason why they were so weak. But suddenly she felt a huge magic pressure surrounding her. 
everyone turned to see the source of the huge magic power which was a flying monster. Oliver noticed the shiny black scales and enormous wings that covered the whole body. He was shocked to find that monster which kept approaching them. It was the 92nd floor's boss, the Black Dragon, and that's how Oren's premonition hit the mark. The Black Dragon scales were like tar, they were almost immune to any kind of attack. It could take a man down at a moment's notice and its aura was terrifying. Such a monster approached the hero's party now. Oliver was shocked to see the black dragon there. The bosses of the southern great dungeon must be on every 10 floors until the 90th floor and from 91st floor, each floor would have one boss. The floor boss is a powerful monster and it's impossible to defeat the similar ones in close combat, and the range of the boss is limited to its locations. They couldn't go beyond his territory and attack. Beside the black dragon is the boss of the 92nd floor which they had already defeated once with Orin. They were shocked to find it outside of its territory. Since they were already out of the zone, Oliver wondered what the hell was going on. The black dragon attacked them with a dragon roar. Derek and Oliver were thrown away by that. Oliver realized how terrifying of a monster it was once again. He saw Derek severely injured by the black dragon attack and Runa acted quickly and healed him. He called out to Philly for support, but it was too late as Philly was in a shock due to the dragon's roar. He didn't even know what the hell was going on. In the past, at this time, Oren would have buffed Derek and Oliver at this time. He wondered why Philly was not better at it than Oren. He was in a state of panic and only Runa's voice made him come out of his thinking. Runa proposed to retreat as she knew that they didn't stand a chance against it. But Oliver didn't want to do that. He was confident of his abilities so he refused to hear Runa's advice. He went ahead and shook Philly to make her return to her senses. He then asked her to buff him so that he could whack the black dragon. Philly casted total improvement on Oliver which boosted all his stats. Oliver had also felt his power rising to some extent so he thought that he could do it. He didn't expect that to happen but he wanted to do his best. He decided to use all of his powers to overcome that situation. He gathered his magic into the sword and attacked the dragon using the skill, Magic Convergence. Philly was shocked to see Oliver's sword shining gold. Runa explained that it was Oliver's innate power. It's a completely different ability from human magic and monster magic. Oliver's ability, Magic Convergence, gathers magic from the surroundings. It was a basic principle but it created a destructive power that was unmatched by ordinary magic. It was a light of spiritual energy which was also the law of destruction. He was determined to attack the black dragon with his most powerful ultimate technique. He attacked the black dragon with celestial cut skill. It caused a huge explosion after that. Oliver believed that he caused considerable damage to it. During the previous subjugations, this skill had destroyed the dragon's wings. This time he aimed its wings again, so it won't be able to chase them even if they retreat. They prepared to leave the place. That's when the smoke which was caused by Oliver's attack cleared and the black dragon emerged from it. Oliver was shocked to find that black dragon unharmed. It decided to attack Oliver who it considered as the most threatening. Annalie warned Oliver but it was too late. Within a split second, it attacked Oliver. He was sent flying into the distance which shocked every member of the party. Oliver managed to block that attack, but he was surprised to see that his celestial cut didn't work on it. The dragon also decided to maintain the distance from the hero's party as it had also used much of its magical power. The hero's party was in a predicament and Oliver couldn't think of a way to get out of that situation. Runa approached Oliver and inquired whether he was okay. Oliver expressed his concern to her. He wanted to know what to do in that kind of situation with a fearful face. Runa berated him as it was his job as the leader. She then asked him to stay still and treated his injuries. After healing him, Runa suggested using the door. The portable door connects two places and it was a magical tool that could be only used in the dungeon. However, they would appear inside a boss area of the upper floors. But they considered that situation as many times better than fighting a black dragon. Oliver also decided to follow Runa's suggestion. He revealed that plan to everyone and asked them to prepare for it. 
he had to admit that they had lost. He soon activated the door and asked everyone to enter. But the black dragon also noticed their plan. It soon sent a huge shockwave and repelled everyone. With that shockwave, Oliver and others weren't able to reach the door. Oliver was surprised as the black dragon had never done that in their previous subjugation. The black dragon charged at them with full speed. Seeing that, Oliver ordered everyone to get out of the way. As they managed to avoid it, it separated them totally from the door. Runa was sure that the black dragon had managed to see through their intentions. She didn't know what to do after that. But surprisingly the black dragon made its way through the door and ignored the hero's party. Soon a bright light enveloped the whole floor. When the light subsided, the black dragon and the door disappeared from that place. Runa and Oliver were shocked to find that the dragon used the door they created. Annalie was relieved as they were safe. Runa berated her for saying that as that was the worst possible situation. The dragon could appear anywhere and they would be blamed for any damages it would cause. They never thought that the door would work with monsters. Derek inquired about their future plans. Runa wanted to go back to the Adventurer Guild to ask them to use Force Return. It was a guild map ability that would force all the people out of the dungeon. Since they won't know where the Black Dragon would appear, it was the best course of action. The guild would impose some kind of penalty on them but they were not in a position to say anything about it. They decided to return to the surface quickly. Oliver couldn't believe that the situation turned out like that. As they were returning to the surface, Runa called out Oliver. Since they need to find and kill the black dragon again, she proposed to include Orin again in their party. They also need to investigate each boss area. Everyone in the party was shocked to hear that. But Runa was adamant about it, even though she felt sad to drag Orin into the mess they created. She proclaimed that they need Orin's strength. Runa wanted to find Orin as he was inside the dungeon with the Silver Rabbit Guild. She wanted to convince Orin to join them. But Derek refused, as he believed that they wouldn't need the help of incompetent Orin. He believed that they were in a slump. Runa couldn't believe Derek kept saying that. She reminded them their conversation they had before the black dragon appeared. She was about to disclose why they were in a slump. Runa clarified that their skills were always at that level. But Oliver couldn't be able to believe it, as he used that same celestial cut to defeat the black dragon last time. Runa explained that the answer was simple. She revealed that it was because Orin wasn't with them. She explained that the amplification of Philly was so weak and that was why the celestial cut was useless. It was the real power of Oliver's skill. But Oliver refused to believe that. Runa further explained that Orin had created his own unique spells to boost Oliver's offense, Derek's defense, and Annalie's magic power. She then inquired whether Oliver knew how the support magic works. Oliver explained that the power of enhancement depends on the spell and the duration of the buff depends on who the effect was applied to. The average duration of the effect was 3 minutes. After that, the spellcaster should have to refresh the buffs. Oliver inquired Philly whether what he said was all correct. Philly also confirmed that. But she explained that their party members had a much higher magic resistance than average, so the buff effects would only be able to last for less than 2 minutes. In Oliver's case, his magic resistance was exceptional. The buff could only sustain him for a minute. Oliver was shocked to hear that for the first time. Still he believed that Philly was better than Orin as her skill level is higher than him. Runa also agreed to Oliver's opinion, but she reminded him that would only apply if Orin was a normal caster like everyone. Oliver was confused and Runa began to explain further. Orin understood that his abilities would be far inferior to other enchanters. That's why he strove to keep up and developed a series of original spells to compensate for that. Oliver countered that Orin's spell still was not good as the other enchanters. Runa denied that Orin had also developed another magic. He used a unique magic that could increase the effects by more than 50 times. Oliver was shocked to hear that Orin was capable of amplifying 50 times. But Philly denied that as even Selma, the world's best enchanter was only able to amplify it for only 10 times. Even though it was hard to believe, 
Runa vowed for Orin's support magic which could increase their abilities more than 50 times in combat. Runa believed that their group was successful due to that skill. Oliver wondered whether Runa was saying that his skill, Celestial Cut, was useless due to the absence of Orin's magic. Runa revealed that Oliver and Annalie's success lay in Orin's unique skill. Oliver would always take advantage of Orin's support magic so the time to channel the magic energy to the sword was shortened. She believed that Oliver could have cut the black dragon wings if he charged for more time, but Orin's skill speed up that process by 50 times. But Oliver still refused to believe Runa's explanation and wanted it to be a lie. Runa then berated Annalie for mistaking Orin's support magic as her own power. Orin had tried to warn her about it numerous times but Annalie refused to believe him. Since Orin's skill speeds up their activation, Annalie could cast the advanced spells quickly, which need a large casting time. Runa berated Annalie for not using mana efficiently in advanced spells. That's also the reason why she had been using only middle tier spells recently. Annalie wondered why they didn't tell her about it. Runa explained that it was because they were already on lower floors that time. That's why they wouldn't have a leeway to let her train in that dangerous situation. Orin always tried to take Annalie to the middle floors to train her, but she always refused it as troublesome. Annalie didn't have anything to counter that. Derek wondered whether his defense was also enhanced. Runa confirmed that but it only lasted for a moment. But in that instant, Derek would gain tremendous power. She also revealed that Orin deployed unique magic on their equipment which made their hunting easier. Orin's support magic reduced the weight and increased the efficiency of every equipment. Everyone was shocked to hear that. Runa clarified that was why she was against the expulsion of Orin. Oliver understood Runa's opinion, but he also knew that it was too late for that now. The hero's party successfully managed to reach the surface. The other explorers who were at the entrance of the dungeon also noticed them. They were amazed at the hero's party efficiency as they believed that they had already cleared it. They praised hero's party and believed that they would surpass the 94th floor soon. They also exclaimed that they were called as a hero's party for a reason. They also believed that S rank groups were on another level and they could have defeated the lower level monster easily. On the other hand, everyone was embarrassed to hear the compliments as they just made a terrible mistake. Oliver cursed himself in that situation. They had endangered all the explorers in the dungeon. They weren't even able to do anything against the black dragon, they had defeated in the past. He believed that he didn't deserve to be called a hero. Oliver decided to solve that problem first as soon as possible. He also realized the problems caused by the absence of Orin in the hero's party. Few hours earlier, Orin entered the Great Southern Dungeon. But he strangely had a bad feeling about their last day explorations of the Silver Rabbit Guild. Orin had entered the dungeon for the last exploration day. This time they had started from the 36th floor, which they had completed the previous day. Their goal was to capture floors 36 to 50. After reaching level 51, they would use the transfer crystal to return home and Orin's job would be over at that point. Just like before, the leader would take care of the demonic beasts that couldn't be defeated by the rookies, and the battles against the bosses would involve the whole team. But strangely, Orin felt a bad vibe in the great dungeon. Orin noticed Logan's face which had shown admiration unlike the previous day. He wondered whether Orin was feeling uncomfortable because of that. In the end, he decided to dismiss those feelings and approached Caroline. He wanted to give a little advice for her future. Since Caroline always ran into the monsters yesterday, Orin wanted her to play defensively a little more. He wanted Caroline to be a little more aware of the surroundings and asked her to move carefully. Orin wanted her to get the monster's attention so that she could help her teammates. Caroline felt that would cause trouble for everyone. She wanted to take the job and fight on the front line for that reason. She didn't want to hear Orin's advice and pushed all thoughts of cooperation aside for the time being. She was adamant to be at the forefront of the fight. Orin explained that there is a limit to what they could do individually so it was better to be aware of how to perform with her teammates. Orin heard that Caroline admired Albert, the ace of the Silver Rabbit Guild. Albert Sensible had lost his life last year in the battle against the Black Dragon, the floor boss of the 92nd floor. 
His absence reduced the strength of the Silver Rabbit considerably. In the conquest of the Great Dungeon, Albert was one step away from reaching the level of Hero's Party. Black Dragon is an opponent that even the Hero's Party had difficulty against. In the worst-case scenario, there could be many casualties in that battle. But Albert died protecting his comrades and saved the life of many members. After he died, many members in the guild had lost their smiles. Caroline wanted to become an explorer so she could save the smiles of the people. So Caroline felt that she wanted to fight at the front line alone, so no one else would be in danger. She also didn't have to shield someone and lose her life like Albert. It seemed that Oren explaining Albert's story backfired on him. He wasn't able to do anything about it, so he just asked her to do her best as usual. Caroline smiled and moved ahead of the party. Seeing her like that, Oren wasn't able to say anything to her. After Caroline left, Sophia approached Oren and mentioned that she wanted to ask him something. She wanted to know what she was lacking so that she could become stronger. Seeing her motivation, Oren planned to answer her questions with a reasonable explanation. He didn't want to damp her motivation. First, Oren wanted to know Sophia's understanding of magic, so he inquired about it. Sophia explained that magic skills are the processing of magical power into various phenomena. But magic is something that only monsters could use. On the other hand, humans learn to manipulate magical power into a phenomenon using the formula. Oren was amazed by Sophia's understanding of magic. In the end, the formula is just the procedure used to cause various phenomena. In other words, magic and magic skills used by monsters and humans were the same. Monsters would use it naturally and humans would use it using the magic formula. He then asked her about the procedures to activate the magic. Sophia answered that it is divided into two stages, magic formula construction and magic power flow. The basic formula construction is the creation of a formula by creating additional adjustments such as power and range of effect to the original basic formula. Next, magic power flow is the flow of magical power from the air into the completed formula. Oren was shocked as he never expected a rookie to answer so many questions. He complimented Sophia for her understanding in magic. He then decided to teach her the skills she needed to take her abilities to the next level. As they progressed, they entered the 40th floor of the dungeon. Oren decided to teach Sophia about parallel construction. It is the art of building two or more formulas at the same time. It is no exaggeration to say that advanced magicians need this skill. Sophia felt that it was difficult to use two or more magics at the same time. Her friend, Logan was able to use two magic at the same time. Oren revealed that some people could build dozens of formulas at the same time. Sophia was shocked to hear that. But she wondered why parallel construction was important as she thought that a single powerful advanced magic would be used in place of it. There are four levels of offensive magic, beginner, intermediate, advanced and special. Oren explained that there were many demonic beasts that could not be defeated in one hit even with special magic. Even if Sophia fired in rapid succession, it takes time to activate it. During that time, the mage is inevitably rendered powerless. That's where parallel techniques would come in handy. At the moment, when one magic formula is half complete, another magic would begin at the same time. That way, Sophia could effectively activate the magic. Sophia also agreed with that opinion as it was best to do something in less time. Oren reminded her that the demonic beasts of the lower layers were that strong and it's not easy to win by simply firing high-powered magic in rapid succession. He reminded her to choose intermediate magic with a small attack scale and she could also use a tactic to fight in cooperation with her allies. Oren explained that all magic would be useful depending on how she uses it. Sophia thanked Oren as she learned a lot. She decided to learn parallel casting first. Since Sophia already had the ability to fight in the middle levels of the dungeon, Oren asked her to learn from the veterans of the Silver Rabbit Guild. Oren knew that Selma would be more than happy to teach her. Even though Sophia understood Oren's explanation, she wanted to learn from Oren instead of her sister. Oren was shocked to hear an unexpected response. Sophia wondered whether it would be problematic for him if she wanted him to teach her. 
She asked Oren with puppy eyes and Oren became embarrassed. He agreed to do it if Selma gave her permission. No one would want a stranger to train them, but Sophia was glad to hear that. Since Selma always had a soft spot for her, Sophia believed that Selma would give her permission. But Oren wondered whether Selma really had the same opinion. Selma also coughed at that time as they spoke about it. A few minutes later, they managed to enter the boss area. The 40th floor boss had a human barbarian appearance with four arms. All the guide leaders gathered there. Selma conducted a meeting there, since it was the first time they were going to fight as a group. Oren then went to meet the other two frontline fighters. He assured them that they would be able to finish the fight within a few minutes. But Anselm and Bernard wondered whether it would be possible to finish the boss in a few minutes. Oren asked the 10th squad to stay at the same place and hide from the boss monster. Sophia agreed to it in place of the whole group. She was excited to see the fight of all the guide leaders. She was amazed to see that they were so powerful, which is totally different from their fighting style. The two defenders Anselm and Bernard attacked while drawing the giant's attention. Oren attacked the boss's blind spots. While the two defenders attacked the lower part of the giant, Selma and Kathy attacked the upper body with magic. Even though it was the first time they worked together, they wasted no time. They executed their role perfectly and Sophia was amazed to see the group of advanced explorers fighting. But she was disappointed to see the fight ending so fast. Nevertheless, she wanted to be like them. She wanted to become a veteran explorer like Oren and others. The 10th squad complimented Oren for his work against the boss monster. At the same time, Anselm and Bernard had a meeting. Anselm couldn't believe that they could defeat the boss in a few minutes. Both of them didn't expect that what Oren said would come true. Oren's skills were barely at rank A, and he also didn't deal much damage to the boss monster, but they managed to defeat it smoothly. This time, the Titan boss didn't launch any major attacks. They were able to defeat it without any problems. Even though Oren said that it was the first time after several years, fighting as a swordsman, Oren was able to fight without any flaws in their group. Anselm wondered why the Titan remained docile all the time. It was so unnatural as if someone was controlling it. Bernard was shocked to hear that. He inquired whether Oren was blocking the giant's movements. But Anselm thought that there was a chance for it, he watched Oren's movements throughout the fight. Just before the giant made its big attack, Oren read its moves and attacked at the vital point of his attack, and then he was able to block the attacker's movement. Every creature has a pre-move because there is such a thing as a preliminary action. Bernard wondered whether it was even possible for Oren to attack that precisely, when he had not been a swordsman for several years. That kind of attack would take a lot of concentration, so Bernard wondered whether it was possible to maintain that state while collaborating with friends. Anselm also wouldn't believe it usually. But he recalled the conversation they had with Oren yesterday. Oren wanted to become a swordsman who could conquer the deepest levels of the dungeon by himself. It seemed that Oren was seriously pursuing that ideal. Anselm felt that Oren was the sort of the person who would stop at nothing to achieve his dream. Bernard also agreed with Anselm that Oren had to have that kind of concentration and skill to achieve his dream. They praised Oren's abilities and Anselm felt that Oren would give them another surprise at the 50th level boss battle. They started to travel again and encountered the 50th level boss. If they could defeat that thing, their mission would be completed. Selma asked to attack so that they could finish it quickly. Oren charged ahead and aimed to cut the left pincher of the crab monster, so he asked Selma to cover him. Bernard wondered whether Oren would be fine as he charged alone. But Oren leaped high without minding that advice. He casted his original magic, instantaneous skill boost. He managed to successfully cut the left pincher and shocked everyone. His original magic instantaneous boost would increase the performance and durability of magic and the user's magic power would increase by 100 times. He found the magic luckily in his research but he used it to survive in the depths of the dungeon. Since he had already managed to cut the pincher, all that's left for him is to crack the shell. Selma also praised Oren for that and ordered everyone to attack. They continued their attack after that and managed to defeat the boss within five minutes. 
They had successfully conquered level 50. Oren's mission was almost completed. All of them gathered so that they could return to the surface. Oren noticed that the atmosphere in the party was so good. Oren felt that everything would end without any incident. Sophia also noticed Oren and waved hand. Oren also waved at her back, but he was soon shocked by the dust created in the back of Sophia. The dust soon cleared and Black Dragon appeared there. The door which the Black Dragon used, reopened on the 50th floor. It seemed that Oren's fear had come true in the worst possible way. It was a scene of pure joy for the dungeon exploration team, as they had just subjugated the 50th floor's boss. However, right before their eyes, the space around the boss area distorted, and a fearsome entity made its appearance. That jet black huge was something, that the hero's party had not only failed to subjugate, but even let escape an existence, that normally should have never appeared on that floor. The tyrant that trampled all explorers one-sidedly on the deepest floor, the black dragon. Everyone was frozen in their tracks including the guide leaders and Selma. They were unable to move due to the tremendous pressure of the dragon. Selma wondered whether it was a real black dragon, as it made no sense for the 92nd floor boss to appear at the 50th floor. The black dragon prepared its breath attack, and gathered a huge fireball in front of its mouth. Selma knew what it meant and tried to give out the orders. But she was shocked to find that she wasn't able to move. Her whole body was paralyzed. She noticed that everyone was paralyzed as well due to fear. If they stayed like that, they would certainly die. That's when Oren shouted at Selma and the leaders, which released them out of fear. He asked them to protect the rookies with their life. Oren was the only one who wasn't paralyzed, as he had numerous experiences through countless battles. Selma also agreed to Oren and managed to get a hold herself. She ordered Kathy to make a barrier in front of the defenders. Anselm and Bernard moved to the front line. After Kathy casted the barrier, they moved to the position to reinforce the barrier. They counted on them to defend against the Black Dragon's attack. Selma hoped that they would somehow endure it. Even after they got buffed with magic and managed to pull a solid defense position. When they saw the massive ball of fire in front of them, they felt death right that instant. Oren casted his original magic, ability increases just in time. The barrier efficiency increased by more than 50 times, and it started to glow which shocked Kathy. But Oren knew that it would only work for an instant. The defenders braced themselves for the impact and Oren was ready to cast it multiple times if it was needed. The fireball made the impact which caused a huge explosion. As the smoke cleared, everyone was fine but the barrier was destroyed. They were shocked to find that all of them were safe. They just used an ant to defend against an elephant due to Oren's skill. Oren was glad that everyone was alive. But he still wondered why the black dragon was there. He also knew that there shouldn't be enough space between the floors for such a large magic beast to move around. Then he was shocked after noticing the surroundings. The 50th floor grew wider in space after the attack of the black dragon. It was an irregularity after an irregularity. Even though, Oren didn't know why it had happened, he had to think of a way to get everyone back safely. Since they had already defeated the 50th floor boss, the passage to the 51st floor was now open. Meaning, they were close to the transfer crystal. Oren knew that they would be able to escape if they could move faster. But all the other members' movements became sluggish due to pressure generated by the Black Dragon. Oren knew that they wouldn't be able to make it. He was the only one who could move normally in that situation. He even had a thought to escape by himself. Since magic beasts have a tendency to go after big groups, he was sure that the black dragon would attack the rookies. Going by his assumptions, he would be able to escape from there safely. But he wasn't that type of person. Since he was the main character, he prepared to fight the black dragon, as it was the only way to save everyone. Right now, Oren's role is to bring those kids, who just became explorers to the 51st floor safely. He didn't want to do something like betraying everyone. He was determined to protect everyone there. Since there were too many who couldn't move due to fear, he had to discard the option of trying to buy time. So he drew two of his swords and amplified it with his original magic. 
He had no chosi but to fight and win, if he wanted to save everyone. Selma was surprised to see Orin charging at the black dragon all alone. Orin readied his sword and threw it towards the black dragon. He aimed it towards its eyes. But the black dragon just closed its eyes, and its eyelids were strong enough to repel the sword attack. Anselm and Bernard were shocked to see that absurdity, as everyone knew that a dragon could dodge such a straightforward attack. But sooner they realized that a rune was going to hit at the moment the black dragon closed its eyes. He jumped high and attacked the dragon using his momentary increase in skill boost. It created a huge impact, and the whole floor was once again covered in smoke. Oren gritted his teeth and attacked it to the end. Afterwards, he landed on the ground. Selma wondered where Oren had managed to defeat the Black Dragon. The smoke cleared and the Black Dragon emerged without any injuries. It was still healthy and roared. Oren knew they couldn't beat him like that. At that time, the jewel Oren wore shined. Selma inquired whether he was okay and Oren replied he was fine. He asked Selma and other leaders to do everything in their power to protect the rookies. Oren wanted to take care of the Black Dragon alone. He asked them to not worry, as there is a chance to win. He assured he would protect the rookies and charged ahead. Sophia asked him to take care of himself at that short moment. As Oren prepared to attack first, he had to draw the Black Dragon's attention from everyone. He used various spells and attacked the dragon. The dragon began to consider Oren as a threat, and he successfully changed its attention on him. The dragon charged its fireball to attack Oren, but unknowns to it, Oren was already expecting it. He knew the black dragon's fireball won't work on him, as it was just a simple attack. He casted Reflective Barrier, which was his original magic. He reflected that attack back on the dragon. It also managed to land on it. The rookies were shocked and wondered what kind of magic was that. It was Oren's original magic which has the effects of repelling and reflecting any attack spells. No other barrier had the same kind of effects. He wondered what it would taste like for the Black Dragon to receive its own attack back. When the smoke cleared, it once again roared. Selma was surprised to see the dragon unharmed again after that as well. Oren managed to make a decision at that point. He began to use his skills on himself as he prepared to take on that Black Dragon. He casted multiple magic circles around himself. It was his All Skills Increase spell, which would boost his stats to its limit. The six basic types of support magic are Power Increase, Life Force Increase, Magic Power Increase, Endurance Increase, Endurance Increase, and Technical Power Increase. They are built in parallel and activated simultaneously. Its difficulty is high, just like Philly activated against Oliver in the previous battle. It can only be used by high-level enchantment mages. Selma also noticed Orin. But Orin's magic increase is only double his power, and it's weak. She wondered whether to provide support to him just when the buff disappears. Suddenly, Orin whispered, All skills increase, overlap. Selma was totally taken back as Orin activated his support magic once again. The effects then increased to triple, which shocked everyone but it didn't stop there and went quadrupled. And at last, his skill, all skills increase, managed to multiply his stats quintuple times. Selma felt that was ridiculous. She never even heard of multiplying to increase all skills, and she had never heard of multiplying by five times. She was scared of Orin's support magic. She wondered how much combat power Orin has now, and she couldn't even guess. After increasing his overall skills, Oren moved towards the Black Dragon. The Black Dragon, which watched the show in silence, also began to move. It once again roared and used its tail to attack the approaching Oren. Oren noticed that and disappeared from that place just when the tail was right before him. Even its tail is enough to destroy the floor's ground. Everyone was shocked as they thought Oren was hit by that attack. That's when one of the rookies noted that Oren was hanging on the cliff. Everyone was shocked as they weren't even able to notice his movements. He moved to that place in the blink of an eye, at an amazing speed. Selma knew it's not enough to say that Oren's just improved his physical abilities. She wondered what the heck was that magic Oren mentioned before. Support magic is originally impossible to accumulate. Casting the same support magic in succession would only reset the time of the effect. However, Oren's original magic overlay literally allows one to accumulate support magic. 
is a technique established by a cheater using a magic bug. Quintuple is a state in which overlap can be activated. Since the value of Auron's support magic was doubled by overlap, and the effect of the buff is multiplied by 5 with quintuplication. Now, Auron is at a different level of power. However, this magic has two disadvantages. First, this magic has no effect on anyone other than Auron, and secondly, it can only be used in short-term battles. This is because it takes a toll on humans' body. Auron began to bleed nose due to the pressure. It involves parallel construction of up to 30 techniques, the burden on the one who uses it is too high. So, Oren had decided to end the fight quickly. The story shifted to Oren's childhood. He didn't remember what had exactly happened. But when Oren and Oliver returned after the training to the town, it was filled with numerous dead bodies. Both of them filled with despair for the first time in their life. It seemed like a group of bandits had raided the town and killed everyone in sight. Both of them cried as their homeland had fallen that day. Even though they were a child, they buried the dead bodies of the people by themselves and paid their respect to the dead. On that day, Oller decided to become stronger. He didn't let anyone take anything from him again. Oren also felt the same and wanted to become stronger. Even if he was being unreasonable, he also didn't want to lose anything. He vowed that day, no matter the circumstances, he will be strong enough to protect what is important to him. That time, the world was being unreasonable towards him, and he became an explorer to find power and knowledge. Unlike that time, he wanted to protect everyone, and he went beyond his limitations. He reminded himself that the situation is not complicated, and he just had to defeat the enemy in front of him. Seeing Oren charging like that, Selma was shocked to see him really trying to defeat the Black Dragon. She knew that the supposedly impossible increase all skills. With overlap, it must be hard just to build the formula. All she could do was protect the rookies there so Oren could concentrate. But still, there was considerable burden on Oren. Once again, Oren approached the Black Dragon. As he moved near it, he noticed the dragon tail moving slightly which indicated that it was going to use its tail once again. Oren dodged it by jumping. His jump was several meters higher as he had his stats all increased. The Black Dragon targets him in mid-air. Selma was also worried for Oren as he was unprotected at that time. Oren also complimented that it was a nice move, but he was better and one step ahead of it. He created a foothold with his magic. Selma was once again shocked by Oren's magic. With a foothold, he successfully dodged the dragon's attack. Even though he talked a lot about his superiority, he sighed as it had successfully worked. Other than Selma, it shocked everyone as they never had seen this kind of magic. This is what Oren's unique ability convergence of magical forces is all about. It is a power that only Oliver and Oren can use to gather magic and materialize it. Oliver used it as a method of attack. It has a wide range of uses and is inherently a very, very super ability. Oren jumped from that foothold. If one could unleash its magical power, it can be used to propel him. It can also be used for aerial movement, just like Oren uses. As Oren leaped forward, he used increased sharpness and increased durability to reinforce his sword. He then used his special skill instant skill increase and slashed the neck of the Black Dragon. But it did nothing and only left a few scratches on it. Still, it stinged for the Black Dragon and it roared. The Ten Squad was amazed at that scene. As everyone was rejoicing, Oren landed on the floor. His breathing was uneven as he was affected by the buff he casted on himself. Selma also noticed Oren's expression and worried. The dragon was quite irritated with Scar, and it flaps its wings for the next attack. Soon a purple mist covered the whole place, and Oren knew about that attack. The next second, a huge explosion occurred at the place he was at. Everyone was surprised at that attack, as the dragon just waved its wings slightly as the smoke cleared, Oren was not hurt. Sophia was relieved to see Oren managing to dodge that. When all the smoke cleared, a large dark spear made of magic had struck the floor surface. The dragon shape shifted the mist and turned it into a weapon. Sophia had never thought the black dragon had that type of attack. That mist is probably a result of convergence of forces. It's magic that harnesses magic from its surroundings. The black dragon's main attack is a quick strike with a fireball, or its tail. 
But those are not the only attacks it can do. The real threat is that purple mist. That mist sometimes changes shape like a whip, sometimes like a sphere, allowing attacks in all directions. When they shut it down before, number of attacks was not like that. That's when Orin knew that the Black Dragon was not fighting seriously. Orin wanted the dragon to take seriously. He soon casted Fireball and attacked the Black Dragon with it. As soon as the Fireball exploded and covered its sight, he leaped forward and aimed at its neck once again. He boosted his stats and attacked it. But his sword got repelled. The whole body of the Black Dragon was really hard. As Orin landed, the dragon used its tail and attacked him. At the same time, Orin avoided the mist, and the dragon suddenly increased its attack speed. Orin knew he couldn't dodge that attack. He created a mud wall and blocked that attack. He jumped backwards just to be safe and maintained some distance between them. But the mud wall didn't work on it. The dragon's tail shattered it like a piece of paper and made its way near him. Orin casted Reflective Barrier and reflected that attack. He was glad to learn the original technique just in case to repel attacks. But the dragon attacked Orin with its tail multiple times, and Orin stopped it all with his barrier. The rookies were bewildered at the terrible battle that was unfolding. Sophia was also worried for Orin, genuinely. Even though Orin dodged the black dragon's attacks, he had not made a single decisive move, which worried Selma. At that time, Orin thought about his fight with the black dragon with the heroes group. Derek and Luna took care of the mist. Oliver and Anari took care of their firepower. It was Oliver and Anari's firepower that killed it. He wondered if he could do what they had done. But at that time and place, he was the only one who could stop the Black Dragon. He reminded himself of his vow of not letting himself be defeated by his limitations. He didn't want to trust his false friends and wanted to believe in himself so that he could beat the Black Dragon. He once again casted buff as it had run out. The dragon's attacks are impossible to defend against, so he decided to dodge it all. He reflected all of his attack and pushed it away from attacking the rookies. Caroline noticed that Orin had changed his movements as an evasive defender. Orin was amazed as he never thought that it was possible to do something like that against the Black Dragon. Even if Derek isn't there, he can evade the attack on his own. If he didn't get hit by his opponents, he didn't need the healer role that Luna used to play. Then there are the physical attacks like Oliver's, or an attacker who can use magic attacks like Anari. He wanted to try everyone's roles at the hero's party by himself. He escaped from the purple mist and attacked with numerous slashes at the black dragon, but none of it worked. Then he charged his weapon for a big attack as he wanted to bring the black dragon's attention to him. At the same time, he also activated numerous spells around the black dragon. The whole time, he was jumping around to set spells around the air. He knew that even the Black had never seen that many spells at once. It would also never be hit by so many spells at once. He activated all the spells and attacked it. Even though he used numerous attacks, it didn't do much damage to the Black Dragon. Orin also knew that so he prepared another move. Soon the magic circles absorbed the mana around it and attacked with much greater force. Oren called that magic amplification chain. Oren smiled as he was sure that he could get its attention with that attack. Now he could fight the dragon without worrying about the rookie's safety. As the spells amplified, Selma was surprised as she had never seen magic attacks being enhanced. Amplification chain. When magic attacks go through the palace where the spell is set, it absorbs surrounding magic power and triggers the same offensive magic with amplified power. This is Oren's original magic that he also uses in combination with magic convergence. He used it to overcome Anri's offensive magic role in combat. He then decided to perform Oliver's role in the party. He used magic convergence. This magic changed the color of the sword and a tremendous magic power covered it. Unlike Oliver's golden sword, this one is jet black. He used the same skill Oliver used, heavenly slash and cut through the dragon. It once again caused a huge explosion and covered the floor. The Tenth Squad and Selma were amazed at Orin's performance. He had been performing every role of all the members of the hero group on his own while bleeding, but this time, Orin aimed for the wings of the dragon. He was relieved after feeling that he had severed something. At the moment the Heavenly Flash collided, Orin also applied instantaneous ability increase. Orin was sure the wings should have been destroyed, which must have greatly reduced the dragon's mobility. 
As the smoke cleared, Orin was shocked to see its wings still intact. The dragon roared with great fury. Orin was shocked as he clearly felt that he cut through something. Then he noticed the severed tail of the dragon. The dragon used its tail to protect its wings. Orin was surprised as he knew it was the first time this black dragon had seen the heavenly flash. So he wondered how the dragon noticed his target. Now Orin had to think more about his next move. Unknown to Orin, the black dragon had been hit by Oliver's heavenly flash before appearing on this level. After learning about the power of the heavenly flash, and the intention with which it was fired, the black dragon protected its own lifeline, its wings with its tail. With its wings, it could retreat at any time if it felt endangered. The dragon once again flapped its wings with much faster speed. This time, the purple mist was generated in more amounts than before. Orin realized the real fight only starts from then on. Orin once again used magic convergence and flew through the sky. At that time, he realized that his body was tearing up inside. He didn't have too much time. The support magic would soon disappear. Selma noticed Orin's state and called out to him. She casted status increase multiply on him to help. But magic convergence would interrupt all the other types of support magic. Selma was shocked to find that she can't activate the magic. Orin told her that he didn't need support magic. He didn't want her to pay attention to him. Instead, he asked her to protect herself from then on. Hearing that, Selma wondered whether Orun was saying that it is enough with just his ability to defeat the Black Dragon. She left the Black Dragon to him alone and left all of their fates in his hands. Orun once again stacked the buff on him, and all skills increased at Quintuple. He created numerous footholds and charged towards it. He managed to reach the wings and tried to attack it, but the dragon knew what he was targeting and dodged it swiftly. The dragon had a massive advantage in air battle, and it was a hassle for him. If he doesn't take the fight to the ground, he can't win. He had only one option now. He soon activated the spells he had set on the path and casted Amplification Chain on top of it. But that attack had both the time and direction fixed, so it is difficult to hit a black dragon in the air. But he had a great idea to turn the situation around. As the dragon approached him, he casted the Reflective Barrier, and forcefully changed the direction of the attack towards the dragon. The attack soon landed on the dragon, and Orin casted lightning on top of it. The dragon was greatly injured by that. Orin's head started to hurt, as he had used too much magic. But he can't worry about it now. He used an amplification chain on the lightning magic and amplified the attack. Soon, hundreds of lightning landed on the dragon and it screamed in pain. Sophia was amazed at the fight unfolding before her. Orin's attack stopped the Black Dragon from moving. It was his chance, and he used Magic Convergence once again and leaped towards it. He used a Heavenly Flash once again at the Black Dragon. But it had also noticed Orin's attack. But Orin couldn't stop now, as it was his last attack and his body was also tearing apart now. He casted Super Momentary Skill Boost and betted on it. As usual, the attack caused a huge explosion that was bigger than before. The whole floor felt the pressure. They soon heard a huge crashing sound. Caroline and Logan believed that was the sound of the dragon falling. But Selma was still wary of the fight and concerned about Orin. Soon the smoke cleared and the black dragon was lying there with numerous injuries on its body and unable to move. Orun used his skill and beheaded the black dragon in front of everyone. This story occurred shortly before Arun confronted the black dragon. The hero's party entered the Explorer's Guild to inform them of the emergency situation. Luna shouted at the lobby of the guild to call for the deputy guild leader. She asked them to hurry up as there was no time. She introduced their team as the Golden Dawn instead of heroes. Even though they were now more often called the Team of Heroes, the official name of their team is the Golden Dawn. Nine years ago, Orun, Oliver, and Luna decided on that name. Then Luna was called by someone. She is an employee of the Explorer's Guild named Eleonora. She asked the others to wait in the conference room as the other staff members are calling the guild leader. Soon, Eleonora guided them to the conference room and all the important officials of the Explorer's Guild arrived there. Luna first apologized to them for interrupting their important schedule. Then, she explained to the guild leader, Leon Conti and the other executives that the Golden Dawn had come there to ask them all for a favor. She then revealed they needed all the explorers of the Great Labyrinth return through deportation the executives were shocked by that, and the guild leader, 
Leon wondered what problem they had caused. The negotiations should have been handled by Oliver, as he is their leader. But he had been quiet for the last few hours, and he was completely useless. So far, Luna would always let Orin handle this sort of thing. But now, out of all the team members of the guild, she was the only one capable of negotiating. Debartation is a magic spell that involves many people, so Leon inquired their reason for using that. Even though the situation is dire, as a guild leader, he wanted to hear an explanation. Luna decided to make it brief due to limited time. She revealed there is an extremely high possibility that the Black Dragon, the floor boss of the 92nd floor, has moved to the upper, middle, or lower boss area. Leon was shocked to hear that. While they were there, if other explorers met the Black Dragon, they would die before they even had a chance to defend themselves. So after deporting the explorers, Luna promised they would take care of the Black Dragon. They need to deport all the explorers to save others in the meantime. All members of the Heroes Party bowed to the guild leader, Leon. He then decided to approve the use of it, since it was an emergency situation. But he needed them to explain it more in detail later. Soon Leon asked the approval of executives to activate the deportation spell. The truth of this information is uncertain to everyone in the guild, and Luna doesn't know to what extent they will believe her. But they had no choice other than that. Luna also prepared herself to face some trouble for their mistakes. In the end, there was no one in the guild to oppose their requests. So Leon authorized them to use the deportation spell of the Great Labyrinth. Luna thanked them for their help, even with little information. Luna then made another request regarding deportation. She wanted people from levels 45 to 50 to move to the square near the Great Maze. Former Golden Dawn member, Orun, seems to be scouting the area and Luna liked him to join them to defeat the Black Dragon. Leon agreed to that request, and they all proceeded with the deportation spell. All of the executives of the guild injected their magical power in front of the magic circle created by the guild leader. Luna wanted to fight along with Orun once again with his support. She expected others to acknowledge the importance of Orun, and she wanted them to go back to the way they were before. Soon inside the Great Labyrinth, the magic deportations activated, and the adventurers, who were battling the monster, were engulfed by it. They soon disappeared from that place. The deportation spell is complete. Leon ordered the Golden Dawn to kill the Black Dragon to rectify their mistakes. The guild were going to stay to avoid confusion among the explorers due to sudden deportation of them from the labyrinth. Soon the hero's party exited the conference room, and Luna decided to regroup with Orin first, but she was stopped by Derek. He still didn't think they needed the help of Weakling or Run. Even though they were talking about Orin's skill and magic, he still doubted whether Luna explained was actually true. So he still thinks that they didn't need Orun. Luna can't understand the mindset of those idiots. Another idiot, Annalie! Believed they lost because the Black Dragon took them by surprise. Both of those idiots believed they would be able to handle it if they had known about its attacks from the start. Luna still couldn't believe those idiots were still complaining like that. They were too blind to the reality of the situation. She decided to explain to them very clearly this time that they are the weakest among the S-ranked teams. So such a team can't beat the Black Dragon when even other S-ranked teams can't. The face of others soon turned sour upon hearing that. Derek refused to be treated as the weakest as they were the renowned team of heroes. Luna once again said that they were able to achieve that fame because of Orin, especially Derek and Annalie. Without Orin's support, both of them would only be a ranks, so she asked them to know their place. Derek argued back that Luna was not in a position to estimate their strength when she is a healer, but Luna clarified that she could win if both of them fought now. The idiot Derek got mad and attacked her with confidence. Luna sighed at her helplessness. She never thought Derek would be so stupid. She called a spirit named Pixie, and it blocked Derek's attack quite easily. It had also managed to pinpoint Derek in one place, and he couldn't move from there. Then, Luna decided to cast an attack spell to attack him, but Oliver stopped her in time. Oliver agreed to find Orin first just like Luna wanted. The leader of the Golden Dawn finally talked, but Luna knew it was too late. The leader really misses timing and everything. A few minutes later, the hero's party reached the entrance of the Great South Maze Labyrinth. They saw a large crowd gathered around the place there. Luna noticed the black dragon body among the crowd, and she could recognize it, Oliver thought the Black Dragon managed to escape outside and drew his sword. But Luna calmed him down. Since there were too many people around, she proposed to approach the Black Dragon without letting the guard down. One of the onlookers noticed the arrival of the hero's party and asked everyone to make a way for them. 
The crowd was confused about what happened. They had been exploring the labyrinth and they got suddenly teleported. Now the black dragon corpse was in front of them. The hero's party moved forward among the crowd. They soon saw the black dragon dead with numerous wounds on its body. Clearly, the hero's party never expected this outcome and was shocked. Soon, a loud noise made her come to her senses. Orn was standing in the center of the crowd with the support of his sword. Luna called out to him happily, but when Orun turned, he was filled with numerous injuries. Unlike others, Orun was happy to see Luna there. Soon the sword turned to dust due to overload. Orun approached Luna from there. Luna wondered whether the Silver Rabbit Guild had managed to defeat the Black Dragon with a run. But that doesn't seem to be the case since Orun was the only one wounded out of all. Soon, Orun managed to reach Luna in his tired state. He asked her to take care of the processing of the dragon's body and moved forward. Luna was totally shocked by that. If the Black Dragon was killed by Orin and the Silver Rabbit Guild, they won't let the rival guild, Hero's Party, take care of processing the valuable dragon's corpse. There was only one ridiculous possibility. Orun killed the Black Dragon alone. Soon her guess turned out to be true as the 10th squad chased after Orun. They wondered if it was all right to let the Black Dragon corpse like that and inquired whether Orun was all right. The Black Dragon that even the whole Hero's Party couldn't compete with was killed by Orun alone. The whole hero's party was silent when Orun approached. Orun soon met Oliver, his childhood friend and family. But Oliver frowned when Orun approached. He deemed Orun as worthless, but he showed his worth to the whole world. Later that night, Sophia decided to write a report about her experiences in that dungeon expedition. She felt Orun was too much for her. Orun directed each of them individually. He also taught Sophia the art of sorcery. Above all of that, he single-handedly defeated the Black Dragon. Sophia was once again saved by Orun. While no one could move, Orun fought to protect them. Sophia thought Orun's expression, at that time, was really cool. Even though Orun always had a kind face, his new change also attracted her. While she was thinking about Orun's achievements, Selma called out to her. She also returned home after reporting everything to the clan leader, Vince. But she was too tired by the whole incident that took place. Sophia also noted how Selma's face looked terrible. It's been a long time since Sophia had seen his sister tired. Selma also went ahead and slept in her bed. Sophia asked her to be mindful of her clothes which might wrinkle. She asked Selma to get at least a shower before going to bed. Seeing there was no reaction, Sophia then proposed to take a bath together. The sister lover Selma agreed without a second thought. So they both went to sauna inside their guild. Selma had to agree that it was relaxing for the mind and body after having a tired day. She thanked Sophia for that, and Sophia was glad to see his sister in a better shape. Then Sophia wondered what bothered Selma so much. Sophia noticed how Selma looked strangely for. Hearing that, Selma asked her thoughts about Orun and the Black Dragon fight. Sophia felt Orun was very strong, but that was the only way of seeing that fight. It was too much of an exaggeration, but on the other hand, the rookies didn't get how Orun's fight was out of the norm. But Sophia felt that it was only normal for others to feel like that. Selma was shocked to hear that. Sophia just implied that she had learned something from that fight. So she inquired about Sophia's finding. Sophia was taken back to see her like that. So she asked Selma to calm down. Sophia then explained that Orin's movements were completely inhuman, and he even used magic she had never seen before. Other than that, Sophia also thinks that it was a basic fight. Orun was doing basic attacker and defender fighting on the back line. At a lecture for rookies, they were taught the basic behavior of each role. Orin's tactics were the same as they had been taught. Selma was surprised to hear that. In the end, Orin's battle was very informative for them. Sophia also wished to become a strong and cool adventurer like Orun. Selma was surprised to hear that. She only saw the otherworldly strength of Orun in that battle. It seemed to Selma that Orun was in a realm far beyond her comprehension. But Sophia was different. She interrupted what she saw in her own way based on her own knowledge. Sophia was improving her abilities and Selma wanted to thank Orun for guiding her. Selma knew Orun was looking at her from a different world. Still, she didn't want to give up. She hoped to one day be an adventurer who could measure up to him, but she wondered if such a day would ever come. She left her parents' house almost as if she had run away from home, so she had no choice but to succeed as an adventurer. Selma's goal is still far away after seeing Orin's fight. Seeing Selma contemplating, Sophia hugged her, which surprised Selma. Sophia revealed she admires her sister more. She wanted Selma to walk on her own path and do a lot of things. Sophia had given up on her life.
because she thought there was no choice but to do what their parents wanted them to do. But Selma showed her another way. Sophia thanked Selma for always looking out for her and for being on her side. She wanted Selma to rely on her for anything. The sister lover, Selma, was moved by that so much. Soon, Sophia got up to leave the bath, but Selma stopped her. Selma wanted to sleep along with Sophia after a long time. She asked Sophia with puppy eyes to which she agreed. The next day, Arun experienced so much pain. It was the worst dream of his life. It was the mitigating pain he had to experience after overusing his skill. His muscles were sore from yesterday's battle. It's fortunate that he didn't suffer lasting effects from using such poor magic, which could also be a magical mistake. Yesterday, Arun returned home on his own. Although Arun was neither physically nor mentally fit to withstand the attention of that place, he felt sorry for everyone in the Silver Rabbit Guild. He wondered what happened after he left that place. Even though he was curious, Arun knew it might be rude to go there suddenly. He decided to get in touch with the Silver Rabbit Guild later. For the time being, Arun decided to go to the Adventurer's Guild. Arun wanted to find how the Black Dragon appeared there. But when he went there, Arun was soon called for a meeting with the executives for the Guild. The Heroes Party, Golden Dawn, was also present there. The Guild leader, Leon thanked Arun for coming. It was truly a bad timing Arun chose to visit there. Even though it was sudden, Leon wanted to inquire about yesterday's event. To be precise, he wanted to know how Arun defeated the Black Dragon. Arun knew that the Black Dragon incident had something to do with the hero's party. Arun explained that he just fought the Black Dragon and refused to reveal the details of the fight. Since Arun didn't participate in the cleanup, he could only give information about the fight. So Leon asked Luna to explain the story once again. Arun was shocked to hear that and he was also in a bad mood at that time. Luna explained clearly about how the Black Dragon escaped from the 92nd floor. In the end, the deportation was activated to reduce casualties, but there was some confusion about the corpse of the Black Dragon that appeared on the ground. With the help of the Guild, the situation was quickly resolved. After hearing that, Leon asked Oren about his side of the story. The Black Dragon has moved through the portable door to the level 50 where Silver Rabbit was. Selma also gave a report to the Guild that Orun defeated the Black Dragon alone. Leon inquired whether it was all true. Orun was truly shocked to hear Luna's story. He never thought his ex-party members were so stupid. Orun agreed that he defeated the Black Dragon alone. On the basis of reporting obligations in the dungeon exploration, Orun agreed to report the battle information on the Black Dragon, which Leon asked earlier. Orun wanted to reveal two content points. He learned some new attack patterns of Black Dragon and how it compares to their last fight with it. But Derek snickered when he heard about it. Derek felt that Oliver and Annalie's attack already left the dragon vulnerable and Oren defeated the weakened dragon. He shamelessly asked Oren to be thankful to them for saving his life. Oren asked that stranger to shut his mouth and not to interrupt his briefing. The idiot Derek was angered, but Orun refused to stand down. He wanted the clueless Derek to shut his mouth. Derek and Annalie got mad to see Orun talking back to them, but Oren was not a complete idiot like them. He got Leon's permission for talking to Hero's party and apologized for not continuing his briefing. He had completely reached his limit. He was really disgusted with them. He then called Oliver, the leader of the Hero's party. He understood there was an irregularity in this case, as they didn't expect the floor boss to leave the floor. But first of all, he wondered why Oliver raided the 92nd floor with a newly hired enchanter. Orun knew that Luna would have objected to that idea, but he wondered why Oliver ignored her. He knew Oliver's arrogance led to this incident. Oliver had no choice but to agree. Orun told them many times that 92 and 93 floors were pure luck. At their current strength, the chances of advancing further floors are slim to none. In fact, there were so many times they could have died with only a slight mistake. He then inquired about Oliver's arrogance in raiding the 92 floor. Oliver also got mad to hear Orun's nagging once again. He countered that he had changed their enchanter for that reason. Since Philly could use support magic better than Orun, Oliver thought they could still continue and that's why they chose to raid the 92 floor. Orun explained that he was not mad as they kicked him out after majority members of the party agreed. Orun also knew there were many more supportive enchanters besides him. He had to admit he was saddened when he was kicked out. He agreed with their thought that Orun would hinder their goal in conquering the Great Labyrinth. Orun was mad because Oliver was disrespecting the enchanters. Oliver shouted that he didn't disrespect Orun, and he changed the enchanter because he thought the change was important. 
Oren was shocked to see his idiotic friend's stubbornness. Oliver can't understand how many things a supportive enchanter had to be aware of. Orun knew that the hero's party wanted the new recruit to be on the same level as him from the start. He wondered how Oliver could think of it when he had never once taken charge for the whole group. He criticized them that even a B-ranked team knows such basics. Oliver couldn't stand Oren's criticism, and he showed his real thoughts. He felt that there was nothing that enchanters had to be aware of, and they just had to reapply the buff when it's time. Other than that, they just had to give orders from a safe distance. Oliver felt it was an easy task that everyone who knew how to use support magic could do it. Oliver felt that support enchanter was the easiest job out there. Hearing that, Oren stood up in anger and exclaimed, 60 seconds for Oliver, 134 seconds for Annalie, 186 seconds for Derek, and 140 seconds for Luna. He wondered whether they even knew what that was. Oren revealed that it was the time for their buffs to wear off. Oren also decided to give a quick lesson to Oliver. Basically, a bestowing enchanter casts an average of three buffs on an alley during a fight. Also, the timing of when the magic activates isn't always the same. The support enchanters had to keep track of all those durations, update the buffs, and make sure they have the right one for them. They also had to play the role of leader of the group. He inquired whether Oliver could do every one of them. Since it was just a parallel construction application, one could use it if they get used to it. Orun agreed that Oliver was capable of that since he is a genius. But it was not the case for the newcomer filly. Orun knew Oliver would have started fighting as soon as he entered the floor, saying that he was checking the link. But the duration of support magic depends on the target, and it's hard to tell right off the bat. They could also die if they ran out of buff at some time. As such thoughts roamed Orin's mind, he desperately struggled during the battle. Then, Orun called out Oliver and inquired what part of it was easy for him. Orin asked them to be thankful to Philly for making it back alive this time. Now, no one in the hero's party could be able to talk back to Orun. After that, Orun apologized to Leon for the nasty part and reported the whole incident at the 50th floor. After hearing the full report, Leon was amused. There was no fault in Orin's report. But compared to the other adventurer's report, they give more information about how the group fought, but Oren's report is very good at hiding information about their party fighting powers. The only thing the adventurer had to report is the information they got in the maze and not reveal their fighting style or original magic, since it would make them more vulnerable to let the enemies be knowledgeable about their abilities. Leon complimented Oren for being clever, but there was one last thing. He wanted to know Oren's future plans. Since Oren managed to defeat the Black alone, Leon was sure that the teams and clans that wanted him would surely increase. There is a possibility that they would fight over him, and that would cause chaos. So the guild wanted to keep an eye on his future movements. But Oren had no plans that far ahead, and he only remembered Selma and the 10th Squad rookies when he heard the word, future. Oren revealed that he would keep exploring unhurriedly for a while. Leon then talked about the Great Western Labyrinth of the Sober Empire, which had been conquered, currently, or Un is in the kingdom of Novitant, southwest of the continent, Adjacent to the northern part of the Novitant Kingdom and occupying the western part of the continent is the Sauber Empire. The Great Labyrinth of the West is located there in a city called Sabal. About three months ago, the deepest part of the labyrinth was conquered. After that, the magical beast stopped appearing and most of the function as a Great Labyrinth was lost. The adventurers who were based in Sebal have moved to this city and the remaining three labyrinths in the region to make it their base of operations. So taking advantage of this opportunity, there were numerous movements of disbanding and forming teams. Leon asked Orun to inform him if he faced any troubles. After that, Orun left the Adventurers Guild after thanking them, but he knew that the Heroes Party and the Guild would discuss the penalties for resorting to the deportation spell. The air inside the conference room was heavy, but it didn't have anything to do with him. He had his condolences for the Heroes Party and he left the room with a smile. The next day, Selma went to the inn, where Orin stayed to inquire about his health. Orun had no problem, and he recovered within a day. But Orun was surprised to see Selma visit him there. He expected that Selma wanted to talk to him about the reward. But before that, Selma thanked him for saving everyone the previous day. They were able to complete the quest without losing a single person, thanks to Orun. Selma bowed to Orun for his help, but Orun didn't like that. He can't believe that Selma, a powerful clan leader, bowed her head to him. However, Selma wanted to thank Oren for saving their clan's future recruits, including her. Oren was amused by Selma's honesty, but he wanted to get the rewards for his hard work. But Selma wanted to talk about it in another place. 
She wanted Oren to go to clan headquarters along with her. Silver Rabbit's head is looking forward to seeing Oren. After enjoying refreshments at the inn, they both reached the headquarters of the Silver Rabbit. The leader, Vince, also thanked Oren once again for saving everyone. Oren shrugged and said he did what he had to do since he accepted the job. But Selma didn't want to take Oren's help for granted. In that situation, no one could blame him if he were to run away. But Oren didn't run away and stood up against the Black Dragon and defeated it. Vince wanted him to be proud of his achievement. He then gave the reward for Oren's job. But Oren was shocked to see them giving him platinum coins. One platinum coin is worth 10 gold coins. They had given him 10 platinum coins, which means they had given him 100 gold coins. But the reward was only 10 gold coins, and Arun was shocked to receive such a huge amount of money. Vince convinced him that the 10 gold coins are too cheap after considering that he saved the group from the Black Dragon. In the end, due to Vince's insistence, Arun decided to take the reward. He then stored it in his magic inventory. As Arun was preparing to leave, Vince stopped him as he had one more thing he wanted to tell him. They called him there to talk about that. To be honest, Vince expects Oren to join their Silver Rabbit clan. Oren was shocked to see the head himself recruiting him, which showed their honesty. Vince wanted Oren to join their first unit, which was being led by Selma. It was their strongest team, and they wanted Oren as a vanguard attacker. Oren was surprised and felt that taking the Black Dragon down was actually useful. Seeing Oren hesitating, Vince throwed a bigger bait. He wants to recommend Orun for the top executive position in the clan, but Orun denied that as he felt he was too young for that important position. Selma assured Orun that their executive management is supposed to be chosen by each department for the exploration department for the exploration department. It is enough to have a background in maze exploration and the ability to be considered a good explorer. Selma was amused by Orun's teaching ability. On top of that, Vince felt Orun is polite, diligent, and hardworking. So they believed Oren would be perfect for that position. Orun was embarrassed as they kept praising him. Selma is also the executive of the Exploration Division, and she exclaimed she exclaimed she would be happy to support the Silver Rabbit Clan with him. Oren thought about Albert, who passed away last year. He was the vanguard attacker of the first unit, and Oren was considered to be his successor. To be honest, the clan situation had nothing to do with Orun, but the Silver Rabbit Guild acknowledged his ability and they were ready to include in their team as a swordsman. Oren was happy to receive such a proposal, but he thought about his past with the hero's party and felt that he didn't need a partner again. Seeing Oren contemplating, Vince explained he didn't have to answer him immediately. Even though the proposal was made in a short time, Vince wanted him to think about it. With that, Oren left the headquarters of the Silver Rabbit. Soon, he went to the grandpa's store, whom he considered as his family members, but the grandpa laughed after seeing Oren about the earlier suggestion, he was having a bad time and found himself in the grandpa store. The grandpa laughed because Arun seemed like a kid to him, at least for once. After hearing about Oren's situation, grandpa knew exactly what Oren was worried about. Oren felt that they would throw him away after using him again. When he was kicked out of the hero's team, he knew in his head that it was his fault for not being useful. After all, it's frustrating as he had done his best so far. That's why he preferred to be alone from then on. He had a lot of things happen, but he had a lot of fun during the three days he spent in the Silver Rabbit. The grandpa explained to Orun that this society is based on mutually beneficial relationships. People can't live alone. Everyone relies on someone's support. Sometimes, one must be supporting other people without knowing it. It's the same with his relationship with Orun. Orun uses him to get what he wants, and the grandpa uses Orun to make money. Use is a word that is difficult to grasp positively. It can be rephrased as make up for each other's missing parts. Orun seems to think that when he joins a clan, he is the only one who has something to offer. The grandpa believes that a clan also has something to offer to Orun. That's when Orun realized that he can also count on the clan's help. He will help the clan conquer the great labyrinth, and the clan should be able to provide all kinds of support. After that, it's up to him whether to get rid of them or not. Orun seemed to have a new realization. The grandpa explains that whatever he decides, he would face regret, whether he joins the Silver Rabbit or not. He will regret it one way or another. Orun needs to make a decision considering the future. That's why it's important to make a choice that would make a little bit of sense to him. After hearing the grandpa's advice, Orun left the store thanking him. He even promised that he would buy something next time. 
After leaving the store, he walked around while thinking, even though Grandpa helped, he still hasn't made up his mind yet because he was afraid of a future of regrets. Orrin couldn't think there's any choice he can make that makes sense to his future self. As he walked, he came upon a place with a clear moon view. Seeing it reminded him of Luna, the only friend who didn't betray him. Luna's name meant moon. As he was mesmerized by the moon, Sophia called him out. Orun was surprised to see Sophia there. He wondered why she was there, as it was late at night. Sophia explained that she got her sister's approval and that place isn't far from the clan headquarters. She inquired Orun for his purpose being there. Orun explained that he just had some thinking. To do so, he found a nice and breezy place. Then, he inquired Sophia her purpose to be there at that time. Sophia smiled and revealed that it was her favorite place to hang out. If something goes wrong, Sophia would always see the sky in that place. It gives her a peace of mind. Afterwards, she remembered that she forgot something important. She thanked Oren for saving her the previous day. Oren is embarrassed as it was the third time he was thanked for his job as the leader. Even though Oren is humble, Sophia was saved two times by Orun and she was thankful for that. She was prepared to do anything for Orun to repay the favor. Oren also agreed for that, but he didn't mean to do that. Then both of them looked at the moon and enjoyed the scenery. Seeing her, Orun wondered whether Sophia liked the moon. Sophia agreed to that. She had been looking at the moon since she was a little girl. The moon shines with the same intensity, even in dark places. So Sophia feels she is receiving some kind of power when she looks at it. Then she wondered whether Orun knew the meaning of their guild, Silver Rabbit in the night sky. The moon is also called the beacon of the night. Just like the moon, the Silver Rabbit wanted to be a beacon for all the explorers. Sophia felt proud in explaining their guild name and Orun just listened to everything calmly but the word beacon resounded to him. He felt like he had the same discussion with someone a long time ago. It may sound far-fetched, but Sophia's world changed when she joined the Silver Rabbit Guild. She doesn't know anything about the future, but she had a feeling that if she stayed in Silver Rabbit, she would soon find something. Arun didn't think Sophia was exaggerating about the Silver Rabbit Guild. The environment greatly influences a person's value. If she is in a place where there are a lot of people like the members of Silver Rabbit, she will have many opportunities to come into contact with ideas and points of view different from her own. As a result of the accumulation of those experiences, Orun thinks Sophia feels like the world has changed. Sophia also agreed with Orun's words, which have just entered her heart. Since she met many people in Silver Rabbit, her world has changed. Orun inquired about Sophia's thoughts about the Silver Rabbit Guild. Sophia felt the Silver Rabbit Guild showed her different paths and the guild which gave her a smile. She could proudly say that the guild was her home now. Orun was surprised to hear that answer. Seeing Orun spacing out, Sophia wondered whether her answer was not good enough, but Orun thanked her for answering all of his questions. He was really thankful for seeing Sophia there at that time. But Sophia had a big question about why Orun was asking her questions about the guild. Orun revealed that he just wanted to know more about the guild that he will join in the future. Now it was Sophia's turn to be shocked. Since the moon has completely set, Orun proposed to take her back to the clan headquarters, since he had some business to attend there. Soon both of them went back to the clan. After leaving Sophia to her room, Orun went to meet the guild leader, Vince. He agreed to join the guild as per his proposal. He also changed his way of addressing Vince as leader. That day, the exiled member of the Heroes Party joined the rival guild ace team, the Silver Rabbit in the Night Sky. Since whatever Orun chose, he would regret it one day anyway so he decided to stick with what he feels now. Because he thinks it's a choice that his future self will be at least somewhat satisfied with, suddenly Selma entered the room and congratulated Orun for joining the team. She gave him a uniform she had already prepared and asked him to try it on, but the uniform was too big for him. Selma designed his uniform by referencing Orun's long coat, but Orun felt uncomfortable with the size. Selma revealed that it was no problem and snapped her fingers. Soon, the uniform glowed magically and restructured itself to suit Orun. He was surprised by that, and Vince explains that it was one of their guild's best-kept secrets. But Orun was not allowed to speak about it to anyone. Orun was thankful for the care he was receiving. He looks forward to working with them in the future. Two days after Orun's visit to the guild, the guildmaster Leon went to visit the Grandmaster of the Adventurer's Guild. The Grandmaster is a man in his 30s, and he had an eye patch over his right eye. 
Leon was the leader of the Southern Adventure Guild, and he came to report something important. He revealed that, three days ago, under his jurisdiction, a single adventurer managed to defeat a boss from the depths of the labyrinth. The Grandmaster was shocked to hear that, but he was glad to see improvement in the South. To go up against a deep-level boss alone, one had to be a bit reckless. Since the Black Dragon was active outside of the boss zone, it appears to have been an improper response to the irregularity of the situation. The Grandmaster felt the clearing of the West Labyrinth could have caused that irregularity. The Grandmaster thought it was Oliver who defeated the boss, but Leon denied that. The Grandmaster thought by himself and wondered whether it was Orun. Leon agreed, but he was surprised to see the Grandmaster knowledgeable about Orun, but the Grandmaster never thought that Orun was in a position to wield that much power. He still didn't believe that Orun would have chosen to take on a deep floor boss. He inquired Leon if he noticed anything unusual about him lately, but Leon denied that. Orun's attitude towards the guild was normal, and no anomalies were detected on the report of the Black Dragon's defeat. The Grand Master felt that Orun hadn't changed a bit, but he still wondered where Orun got the power to defeat the Black Dragon. He was very curious about it, and he thanked Leon for that info. The Grand Master wanted information about Leon if anything happened to him, and Leon left the headquarters. The Grand Master was very excited, as if it continued like this. Orun would be his savior. He gripped his shoulder and planned to put the past behind when the time comes. The Grand Master revealed an evil laugh. He wanted Orun to keep dancing like that without waking up from his dreams so that he could fulfill his ambitions. The whole incident is a mystery, and no one knows what will happen in the future. Meanwhile, there was another group planning to kill Orun, who was his very own childhood friend. Please like and subscribe to see Oren's future endeavors.